Hello, hello, hello. What's up this afternoon, everyone? <coughs> hello, hello, hello. Fine Tuesday, dear. Good to see ya, good to see ya, good to see ya. What is up, Affinity to Squirtle? AJK Mark Stone Reigns, Althazag Bot Ego. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bobby Bushu Bobby Blood Sugar. Welcome you to the Fishbowl as well. Big tip for you. Betty Mon, how's life, Betty? It's been a minute. See Bloomer, so many subs today, but I don't hear him splashing. Oh no. I don't know why. Ah, oh, sometimes. Sometimes Streamlabs doesn't work. The mic are Arnold, 68 months. Oh, good news. I uh, I actually talked to Richard today. We're going to be getting uh, new loyalty badges for people. They stopped after four years. I guess we didn't realize we'd be streaming this long. Kind of like like Wizards when they're like, ah, we turned Black Lotus because we didn't know the game was going to be going 30 years later. Uh, we, we did not realize. I guess we didn't think through that the stream might be still going after 70 months. So more loyalty badges are, are going to be incoming for long time subs. So you got that to look forward to. Did you see the Enigmatic Incarnation version of this deck? Uh, I have definitely, we've played Enigmatic Incarnation in Pioneer with Siege Rhino before, and it's definitely pretty sweet. I haven't seen an Explorer build, but I'm sure there is a sweet Explorer build. Got the plane, really, you got the playmat already? That is faster than I even realized. Hey, G Fuel Gold, good to see you, good to see you. So how is everyone today? Hopefully everyone is uh, is having a good weekend, having a good day. So today, the time has come. Wizards has finally offered a Siege Rhinos on Arena. So the plan for today is pretty sweet. We're gonna start with some Rhino Panharmonicon action, uh, see how that goes. And then we might try some just normal abs and mid range, kind of a traditional Rhino, maybe competitive, more competitive, or I don't know, maybe the pan Armonicon deck will be the best version of Rhinos. So we're going to do some Rhinoing. I don't know, maybe we play some Historic. There's a couple of janky Historic decks that maybe we'll get to on Thursday. Like, Historic Shrines is kind of neat. There's an Enchantment Prison deck I built that tries to uh, lock with Overwhelming Splendor Night of Souls Betrayal. So we're going to have some fun with new Arena cards today. So <clears throat> we got an error on the screen. Huh? How was that possible? That's... <laughs> Something went terribly wrong. What? Did, I've never seen this before. Go to... I don't even see that on my screen. <laughs> uh, how do we fix this? So it it's fine there. Broken there. Oh my god. Doubly broken there. Oh, and there's no chat. <gasps> Alright, hang on. Hang on. Streamlabs. What if I go here? There's gotta be... There's gotta be a way to fix this. There's gotta be. There's gotta be, there's gotta be a solution. <laughs> uh, refresh? How about refresh? Does that solve everything? Well, man, oh, refresh. Okay, refresh is a solution to all life's problems. Kel, Kellis, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think we're good. I think we're good now. Hopefully, hopefully, maybe. Okay, that's all it took. And now we get the splash too. So, so that's the plan for today. Rhino Sweet New Arena cards. Oh, so Thursday, a quick, quick story time. Quick story time. And then we'll uh, do our reminders and start playing some uh, some rhinos. So you might have noticed, no stream Thursday. That was because Bear got attacked by a raccoon. I didn't even know this was a thing that could happen. Bear's a big boy. He's probably 140 pounds now. We were out taking a walk and... <laughs> We were out taking a walk, and he literally got attacked by a raccoon. There's this pond that he always likes to run down to and, like, take a dip in the pond. So he runs down to the pond, and next thing I know, I hear this horrible, like, screeching and just, like, really over-the-top noises. And the pond's kind of a long ways away, and I, I don't know, I thought, oh, something's probably running in the woods. I don't even know. I live out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. So it went on for, like, a few minutes. So I'm like, I guess I got to go down there. So I went down there. There is Bear. There is Bear actually in a, a life or death struggle <clears throat> with this huge raccoon eventually bear did win bear's not a fighter though i don't think he knows how to fight he's never really had to fight anything so i don't think he really knew what to do the raccoon was trying to like scratch his eyes out and eventually bear just got it and kind of like picked it up and smashed it on the ground a few times uh and, and ended up winning but bear got like pretty scratched up and raccoons don't normally attack dogs so i was worried that he was gonna have rabies and then i talked to public health and they said you gotta get him to the vets like right away with a 24 
hours. So it was a huge, like, dramatic thing. Thankfully, thankfully, he's a he's looks like he's gonna be fine. The vet gave him uh, more shots and all this stuff. They said keep an eye on him for like weird behavior, weirder than normal behavior. But <clears throat> he's been acting normal, so I think he's gonna be good. But yeah, that was that was the excitement on Thursday why we uh, had to cancel the stream. I was at the vets with bears, so. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was that was weird. I didn't know raccoons would do that. Kristoff in bear afterwards. <laughs> Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we were out for a walk and there was a there's a pond. There's a hill and down at the bottom of the hill. There's like a pond that he likes to run down and like swim in the pond. And then he comes back up and keeps walking. And he got in the fight down by the pond. The <laughs> Kind of the funny part is I think he was like traumatized by it because after the fight, so he finally like the, the fight ended. I got him away from the raccoon. He went in the pond and he just wouldn't come out for like 15 minutes. He just like stood there and kind of looked like a zombie with wide eyes. And I'd call him and he'd just like look at me. And I think he like couldn't process. <laughs> I think he, uh, I think he couldn't process what was going on. I think it was just uh, kind of, kind of blowing his mind that he had actually gotten in this life or death fight. So it was, it was definitely interesting. No chat on screen. Uh, something's, <clears throat> something's up with Streamlabs for sure. But why? Um, chat. Huh. All right. Let's let's try this. Refresh. Let's see if this <laughs> maybe brings it back. It's working on, okay, it should, hopefully it comes back. So anyway, that's the bear story. <clears throat> yeah, I think he should be fine though, thankfully. But anyway, that's why we weren't see Dry Nui on Thursday. So reminders, replay YouTube, that's when you find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, tons of stuff going up tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Oh, janky against odds. We are Shadowborn Apostling for Against Odds and Explorer. Pretty uh, pretty interesting how it turned out. So that's up tomorrow. There's a ton of sweet modern stuff, Pioneer stuff coming up. So keep it out for all that. Some really good bunch of magics uh, that I've been working on that I think you're really going to like. So lots of sweet stuff on the YouTube. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, maybe from Double Masters, maybe a City of Breath, maybe a Reign of Filth, or a Hell's Caretaker, whatever, you can get them at Card kingdom.com slash mtg goldfish even get a free goldfish sticker let them know you want them and they'll hook you up otherwise merch page thank you to everyone who bought a playmat the playmat sale for the limited edition playmat it is over it ended on sunday so that's done but there's still tons of stuff on the merch page and huge thank you to everyone who uh, picked up a playmat otherwise discord new and improved donations always appreciated never required two dollars or more get your message right on stream and it is time to siege rhino so siege rhino deck one this is is Rhino, Yarion, Blink, Panharmonicon. So essentially, it's a Panharmonicon Blink style deck. We got four Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino, really good with Panharmonicon, doubling up the ETB trigger. We got ways to Blink our stuff, Touch of the Spirit Realms, Charming Prince. We got Yarion in our companion zone. And now we just get a bunch of good ETB stuff. We get ETB card draw. We get the early game wrap. Another new addition in Elvish Mystic that wasn't on Arena before. Working our way up to Workshop War Chief. Working our way up to Titan of Industry. We got Gontis. We can use Teleportation Circle to blink things every single turn is this deck gonna be good it's got siege rhino so it should be great but <laughs> actually i i have no idea panharmonicon has not been that strong lately i it's that's one of the saddest parts of <clears throat> pay no mind you did not see <laughs> you did not see a dirty blue white control deck <laughs> For, for Explorer. I, I would never play a deck like that. <laughs> How often are Memer Dream episodes? Do you like Memer Dream? Right now, Memer Dream episodes are whenever I feel like it, basically. <laughs> whenever I come across a deck that is uh, is is uh, appealing to make into a Memer Dream episode. Hey, Seth, had Bear had his shots in case the raccoon had some illnesses? So, yes, he had had, like, his first rabies vaccine, like, a year ago. And then when I talked to public health after the raccoon, the raccoon attack, they said, you got to get him to the vets like today, basically. That's why I had to cancel the stream because I had to get to the vets right away. And, uh, and he got a bunch more shots in boosters. So he should be good. So he had had the basic ones, but then he also, he also got some more, uh, after the raccoon attack. Doretti Spaghetti, AGK Mark, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll do some more memer dreaming then. We definitely will. It's I haven't focused on it a ton, because um, it's only standard or or historic, because those are the only uh, formats they published lists for. So I haven't focused on it a ton, but we can definitely do more of it, because I always have fun when we meme or dream. 
Uh, two things. First and foremost, I have no news on my job, but I'll be letting you know as soon as I do. Uh, second, uh, do you have any food you remember? Second, do you have any food you remember that I talked about that you'd want to make for Vegas? Ooh, it's a lot of witches ovens. Have they ever find a cauldron familiar? This is going to be, this is going to be bad news. Um, let's just, whatever. Elvish visionary, draw a rhino. <laughs> rhino, please. Um, <clears throat> Oh, there were so many good foods, Magikarp. I'm trying to think of any of the specific ones. I remember, like, so many that you'd show me the picture during the stream, and it looked really delicious. But I don't remember <clears throat> specifically what they were. Well, let's keep drawing cards. Spirit of Companion. The rhinos will come. Yeah, I don't know why they don't publish Explore decks. I wish they did. It seems so obvious that they would. I, it kind of makes me feel like Wizards doesn't care about Explore, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it sends that message. Have I played with Insole Artifact yet? I haven't. I think that Insole Artifact can probably make a pretty good uh, Explore Budget Magic episode. Oh, no. There's the... Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Well, now this happens forever. Uh, well, all right. Teleportation Circle. So I think our next goal is to get to blinking this Titan of Industry, I guess. We can live for a while. We're not going to die immediately. Unless they find Mayhem Devil. Then we might die immediately. Island Smile Go. Welcome to the Fishbowl for the 25th month. I love Member Dream, but it shouldn't be a regular series. There aren't enough inter interesting decks with Field Force. Yeah, that's, I mean, kind of where I'm at. Where when there's a, a deck that catches my eye, I do one. But then... As a every week thing, it's kind of tough because some weeks there just aren't decks that I find that interesting. Wow, huge raid, Jim! Thank you for the raid. Welcome, Raiders. We are uh, we are rhinoing with uh, Blink Stuff and Panharmonic. Oh, double teleportation circle. We are at Siege rhinoing. Hey, Jim, how was your stream? How uh, how goes the gobliting? Wait, actually, it's not Monday, is it? So no goblins? <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, AJ? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. So what has been uh, what has been exciting for y'all from the anthologies? Is there anything that's really, really been sweet? I mean, I know obviously you can put Kalidus into whatever top tier deck. You can put uh, Supreme Verdict into Blue Eye Control. But has there been anything interesting that you've really enjoyed? Johan Leaf, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My ISP has decided they need to be a full-time YouTuber now. Oh, no. Are you having not a, not enough speed to stream? Oh, boy. I always worry about that because I, I live out in the middle of nowhere in an area that is not known for its consistently good internet. So I always expect that someday, someday, and plus it's Spectrum, and I always hear so many horror stories about Spectrum. So I think I've just gotten lucky so far that it's worked. Um, let's Charming Prince gain some life. I mean, I think our goal is, right now is mostly just to stabilize so we can get tightened down and eat these witches' ovens. You said that Chaos would probably not do much. All right, kills the Mystic. Sure. Well, let's gain. Uh, let's scry, actually. Scry and then gain with the blink. Ooh. All right. Um, we'll keep the Visionary Mystic to the bottom. Pass the turn. Blink the Charming Prince. Yeah, I live in one of the most densely populated parts of the country. And we've become one of these P because they've got a monopoly and they throttle my up. Oh, no. Jeez. That's so messed up. Oh, yeah. And there's probably not much you can do about it. Like, that's the worst. That's the worst part is it's not like you have any recourse. You can't just go to another company. That's how it is where I live, too. There's literally one. Actually, I think there's two. The other... <laughs> There's a, uh, the ISP that I have now, which is Spectrum, and Spectrum is, uh, it doesn't have the best reputation, but it's worked well for me so far. The other ISP is literally like dial-up speeds. It's like, I can't even remember, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5 download or something. It's like, literally, if you have two people on their phones at the same time on the Wi-Fi, it just like, the whole thing doesn't work. It's, I don't even know how it's legal to sell this internet in... <laughs> In 2022, it's so incredibly bad. Well, let's uh, let's get rid of this Corvald, which is definitely an issue. The only problem with satellite, I looked into satellite internet. The only problem I found with satellite internet is it's usually capped at like a couple gigs a month, and I go through that like 
in a I go through that in a in a day uploading videos. Like there's no way. 300 rhinos. We got to figure out a reason to play more than a battle of wits number of cards. Hey, welcome AJ. Good to have you on the stream. Bonant. Drawing a bunch of cards, doing a bunch of annoying cat stuff. Sure, 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 sure. Get rid of the Corvald. Cat oven is so obnoxious. I wonder <clears throat> why do they why do they make this? <laughs> Eldorade! Eldrain. What what is an actual excuse to play more than 250 cards? Because it would feel weird just to play like a thousand dollar or a thousand card deck just to play more rhinos. It feels a little cheaty, I think, to do it that way. Alright. Temple Garden. Hit you with the Charming Prince. Well, opponent drew a new hand with this cat oven corbold stuff. Yoda man, welcome to the fishbowl for the 49th month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super, super, thank you, thank you, thank you. They do. Wouldn't it be great if they actually put Battle of Wits in historic? They should. All right, blink the charming prince to blink the elvish visionary. Next turn, Titan of Industry can come down. We'll see if they have removal for the brutal Cathar to get Corvald back. They left themselves without a food, which is awkward. Our opponent, I mean, we did get bumped down to like the lowest rank possible. <laughs> We've been playing too much Moto, and now we're, I was literally bronze this morning. Bronze, bronze one. <laughs> which I think if you just download Arena, you're at a higher rank than that, but. <laughs> Ooh, stand, stand still. Do you think, do you think the players would enjoy Sandstill in Standard? Sand still, you just, you don't cast anything. Easy. It's so easy to play around. Just do nothing. <laughs> Making cat oven, I can understand. Letting the gameplay loop, almost as boring as eggs, remains around as a head scratcher. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I guess it maybe made sense for, what are they doing? All right, manually taps all their mana, plays a cauldron familiar. <laughs> I'm so confused. I am excited to tighten interest to array these witches ovens. I think Titan of Industry just wins us the game. Even if they kill our Brutal Cathar, I think it probably just wins us the game. Meet Hook Massacre X2. Well, maybe it doesn't. We'll see. They get the Corvald back. They wrath our board. They get a food. They get to do all this annoying stuff. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, maybe we're... Are we just going to die? <laughs> this is also Eldrain, by the way. <laughs> Last season, I had to go from bronze to diamond by enjoying Explorer, so it's not a real problem. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the downside. Stancil is a sweet card. It's definitely a unique card. A very unique card. It has some cool legacy decks around it. Opponent. Oh, yeah, Besage would be really good against it, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd probably be fine. All right, well, let's see if this Titan of Industry is going to be good enough. We can get rid of the Ridges Ovens to stop the loop. They still have a big Corvald that we cannot currently answer. Haven't found a Siege Rhino yet. All right, draw a card. Well, uh, land on green, Titan of Industry. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Blow up Witch's Oven. This Corvold's still massive, though. This might... Are we still just going to lose to Corvold? Wow, opponent lets it go. Okay. End of turn. Teleportation Circle. Blink Titan of Industry. Do it again. Which is ovens down. Uh, destroy and shield counter. Get rid of which is oven number two. Shield counter on Titan of Industry. All right, your go opponent. Well, that should slow him down at least. 
will you be at DreamHack Atlanta for the NA Pro Tour qualifiers? I don't believe so. So I think the next events that I know I'm going to, there's a there's one in Rochester, New York, a Commander Sealed charity event in September I'm gonna go to. And then uh, Magic 30 out in Vegas is on the list. Is Boy Colossus good in Explorer? I don't think so because we're missing Sanctum of Ugin. Sanctum of Ugin is actually really important to the deck. It might be so important that it just isn't going to work very well. So I think that's the that's going to be the sticking point. But as a Mayhem Devil, well, with no Witches Oven, that's a little less scary. And then Besaju Teleportation Circle, sure. Get a Triome. All right. If we ever deal with this Corvald, then we're kind of in good shape. Opponent <laughs> thinking. Oh, we haven't drawn one yet, but they do. They do exist. Wow, getting back. Okay. Sacks the food. Gets back. Kills the Mystic. Grows the Corvald. How do we stop this Corvald? Corvald's a messed up card, isn't it? Jeez, that's a. I don't think we can kill it, honestly. Another Gilded Goose. Sure, sure, sure. But it goes to combat. But it attacks. Or not. Hopefully not. On it attacks and sacks and grows. All right, well, we can block. Oh, I don't know if we can get out from under this. Okay, we draw nothing. Well, okay, Skyclave. Get rid of Mayhem Devil. Go to combat. Attack, attack. <laughs> the race is on. Yeah, we do have the Cathar, but the Cathar just dies. We don't have like a, a hard removal spell. Is there any way, is there a good thing that can get stuff back from the graveyard in this format? I wonder if we could have Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness and Explore? Yeah, I mean, that's the, we got bumped way down in the ratings. So I think our opponent's uh, just learning, learning. Yeah, I think uh, pinging it would have been... That's what I would have done. That would have kept us from being able to block. Well, Teleportation Circle comes back. Land of War Elves. Tap land. Blink the Titan. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Get a shield counter. Go. And then next turn, we can Yarion. That is a lot of value. Shiggy could be sweet. Oh, channel points. Chat, so many channel points. Too many channel points. Renegade Rallier. Oh, that can only get back two mana value or less, though, right? So it couldn't get back, like, our Brutal Cathar. If we get Eternal Witness a Brutal Cathar, that'd be so good. Timeless Witness is not an Explorer. It's in Historic, but not an Explorer. Shigiki, Shigiki is good, even though it doesn't exactly work with... Doesn't exactly work with uh, Panharmonicon effects. All right, Sacks a Cat. Jeff DC! We need a Rhino. A Rhino would actually be good. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ya. Do we just take this? What removal will this deck have? Oh, we really don't want this Titan to die because we need to blink it next turn. But we also don't want to die. Yeah, go get your fine broker might be. That might actually be the best option. Hmm. Ah, this is this is tricky. Could try Garrick's Uprising to just play mid-range Siege Rhino. Like, imagine if Siege Rhino drew on ETB. Yeah, I have a just a mid-range deck. It doesn't have Garrick's Uprising, but maybe maybe that could be worth trying. I think we block. Mm. 
hopefully if this dies then we're in sad shape unless we top deck something <laughs> this core vault's just going off gloom shrieker oh gloom shrieker could work wait let me let me look at gloom shrieker what is the difference uh, enters the battlefield. Okay, return a permanent. I mean, that's still in a deck like this. That's pretty much all creatures. That's essentially, essentially a, an eternal witness. Pretty close. Yeah, Corva. Elderade. Elderade. Where's our rhinos? We need. We need a rhino. opponent i mean other than this corvald we're kind of very much winning the race we just we're putting a lot of effort into not dying to this corvald yeah the exile does mean <clears throat> that you can't loop it which is i guess a bit of a drawback opponent wow plays the trium interesting trail of crumbs sure 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 and <clears throat> no thraben inspector although we could play thraben inspector we got mana dorks in the one drop slot. Ugh. Well, okay. Yarion. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Um, yeah, get in, hit you. Ugh. Balakid recovery, yeah. Balakid recovery could be a a nice a nice one of. I do like my MDFCs. So our removal is touch the spirit realm, skyclave apparition, brutal Cathar. Okay, gets back a cat, gets some triggers, draws a card. So those are our main uh, removal spells at the moment. But we could uh, could play Chupacabra. Hey, what's up, turn uh, two? How are you, Spike Jester? Found it makes a food. <laughs> oh, this deck is so tedious to play against. If there's an argument for banning this deck, it's probably that. Oh my goodness, like calling it 16 minutes, us 25 minutes. <laughs> or I guess 17 minutes, but still, like, oh my goodness, it's so slow. Yeah, yeah, that's only that's just a arena digital only thing. So double blocks of Skyclave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that was not a great attack. We've definitely drawn many lands. Opponent goes to four. A bunch of stuff dies. Oh my god, opponent. <laughs> oh my god, opponent. Okay, opponent proceeds to timeout, gets back a cat, <laughs> grows a Gorbald. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's up, Night for Justice? How are you? Good to see you. Vox Chat, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The cat returns. All right, opponent has done their stuff. We'll play Yarion. Blink the Titan of Industry. Land. Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't do anything, does it? All right, so we get back the Titan of Industry. Shield counter and four four. Pass the turn. Opponent found. Wait, how did they get this mayhem? To, oh, off the trail of crumbs. So our opponent can probably win then, right? <laughs> Boy, this matchup has not been fun. Uh, there's no order that you can actually do what you want to do. There's teleportation circle has to target something. So there's not a way to get your things back with Yarion and then blink them with Teleportation Circle. That's just not a not a possibility. 
I think we got to kill our opponent. I think our, our pathway to winning, other than our opponent timing out, which is seeming more and more likely, but our pathway to winning is, um, I think, just to just to actually lethal our opponent. So I don't think we care about gaining life. I think the plan is block with the Titan, which is worse because of the Mayhem Devil, but survive the turn, try to win on the backswing. We've drawn a, yeah, this is game one. We've drawn a ridiculous amount of lands. Yeah, Lumbering Battlement could be fun. It's sweet if you have Teleportation Circle, but much less sweet if you don't have Teleportation Circle. All right, opponent pings the Titan of Industry, grows the Corval, draws some cards, gets a treasure. Hey, what's up, Monster CC? Maybe we gotta take in like, <laughs> play a, <laughs> Play some sort of top tier deck just to rank up to play against faster opponents. Opponent, more Mayhem Devils. Yep. And time's out. Okay, Gilded Goose. Get some pings. Our opponent is going to time. This is We're going to play this for an hour. Now this turn is ending with our opponent timing out. Wait, why did they give him more time? Did you see that? Did you see our opponent time out and then it refilled their clock for no reason? That's suspicious. <laughs> it literally timed out and then it went back to full, full bars. Opponent attacks with Corvald. Thinks about attacking with Corvald. Does attack with Corvald. Yeah, cat is the nerfs. We didn't. We don't really normally play formats that have nerfs. Gonna get some triggers. Does some pinging. Ah, uh, it is not very clear to me why your opponent has not timed out this turn. They had zero hourglasses. They they wasted that time out already. Okay, opponent gets back a cat. And gets back another cat. See, it just refilled their clock again. I, I really don't understand why our opponent has infinite time. Opponent. Well, but no, does it actually just refill your entire hourglass? Like, our opponent was at, like, literally at zero. And then it went all the way to full. I know that it gives you a little time, but I didn't think it just actually was like, hey, oh, it resets your entire timer between phases? Ha! <laughs> yes! Oh, the rhino comes through. The rhino comes through. Boom, to three. No attacks, end of turn. <laughs> <laughs> blanket, blanket, take that, Eldraine. <laughs> oh, the Rhino knew. The Rhino knew. The that was that was some uh, karmic justice from the Rhino. <laughs> and to sit through all the pings and the core wall drawing, and then uh, siege Rhino. <laughs> Too good. Too good. All right. Rest in peace, I think, is uh, is probably coming in. Night of Autumn also seems good. We could bring in the Fatal Pushes if we can find room. Uh, what is bad against this deck? Uh, Massacre Worm. Eh, it's okay. Stealing. Stealing our opponent's core vault would be sweet. Oh, we got to cut so many cards if we're going to bring... 10 that's so many cards to uh to bring in yeah that was that was the first rhino we've seen and it came at the absolutely perfect time <laughs> uh, yeah that was that was perfect Cathar is probably bad yeah it is one of our few ways that actually that actually just straight up answers a core vault which is nice it doesn't live very long which is awkward but I mean, I guess we can just trim, trim. Tulsimar can actually fight a, a Mayhem Devil, which is good. Maybe we don't need Workshop War Chief. Masker Worm doesn't get Mayhem Devil. If we find our Yasharn somehow, that's kind of amazing. Actually, Ganti's probably 
not super necessary. Mm, maybe, maybe something. Eh, one pan harmonicon. Something like that. Let's try it like that. Stellar Doe, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Why Brutal Cathar over Chupacabra? Uh, Brutal Cathar is just cheaper, mostly. That's the, that's the biggest upside. Well, I was saying it's kind of wrecked by Mayhem Devil, but otherwise, it's pretty good. Oh, I know, we finally got it. We finally got it. Massacre Worm is really funny against Cat Oven, though. I guess that's true. It does, if our opponent is doing Cat Oven stuff, it does drain them. Like, that's an upside. I missed the food. Uh oh, what, what's the food, Magikarp? I did miss it. Hey, how are you, Cat Cam fan? I wonder if Swift Spear is coming in Diamond United since it was an anthology. Giant making prowess tokens make me think it's possible. Uh, maybe. I mean, I guess it would be okay in standard, right? It probably would be. Ouch. <laughs> Elvish Mystic. Uh, you've had pulled pork, but you've ever had pulled chicken. Hawaiian bun with tender, fall apart shredded chicken with sauce made of habanero pepper, which is not spicy, but is a very particular flavor that's so good it makes you want like 20 of them. Ooh. That does sound, that does sound pretty delicious. Well, okay. That sounds really good. I don't think I've ever had pulled the uh, pulled chicken actually. <laughs> These mana dorks might be sketchy against Mayhem Devil decks. Maybe that's maybe we cut mana dorks. That might make us too slow though. Yeah, Callous Blood Mage, I think, is it's in the conversation. Outland Liberator. Sure. Hmm, well, Charming Prince. Blink the Spirited Companion. Temple Garden, Elvish Mystic, go. Mana Dorks with the bullet reserve for Rhino, so it's a win-win. <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, that is true. Ugh, more, so many mana dorks. <laughs> more mana dorks than we need, really, I think. Although maybe it'll let us Akadim's Awakening someday. That could be that could be something. We kind of got to get rid of this Liberator before we Teleportation Circle. Oh, boo. So I, I missed this earlier. Has anyone done anything cool with Anthology cards? Like, what is... Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I uh, I take it back. <laughs> Mana dorks are super good now. <laughs> uh, yes, that makes things much better. Godless Shrine. Get in with Charming Prince. One, two. Wow, we can just we can just play a Titan of Industry next turn. <laughs> if our Mana dorks live, and we don't get if we get Meatball, that's bad. But if we don't get Meatball massacred, pass the turn. Yeah, I probably should just grab Yarian, I guess. Ooh, and so, yeah, I've been wondering... Hey, what's up, Rucker? I've been wondering... Uh, oh, by the way, the, the article is uh, going to be going up this week. Probably... Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. But sometime this week, so it's going, uh, going soon. The Explorer Anthology definitely has a... Well, I don't think we can teleport circle with the liberator out we gotta wait till we can kill this i think or else we just lose it all right there's a cauldron familiar there's the witch's oven we should have grabbed yarion though because we're not really using this mana for anything Abundant. well no corvald yet which is good i've been running in soul bridges and historic i think i have a positive win rate with my artisan list Ooh, that's actually winning with no rares or mythics is pretty impressive we are rhinoing this time with rhinos there's there's rhinos in the actually rhino we've only got through one game so far in this very very slow first match but rhino was the hero it was the hero <laughs> we broke it already Ooh, rip rip is really good here uh but i think we have to I think we have to just do this. 
kind of industry. <laughs> There's only two Titans in the deck, too. 100 Rhinos on Arena when We need Battle Wits. We need, or another excuse to play that many cards. I don't know. Am I? <sighs> okay, let's say. Let's say you turned on the YouTube one day. And there was a. There was a video that was a thousand rhinos or something, but there was no reason to be playing a thousand cards. It was just literally a meme. Would you be like, ha, that's sweet. It's a thousand rhinos. Or would you be like, wow, you're an idiot. Why are you playing a thousand cards <laughs> for no, for no reason? I know for some reason it feels weird to me when you don't have an excuse. Like Battle of Wits is like such the perfect excuse to play 250 cards, because you literally have to to win with Battle of Wits. But if you don't have the excuse, it feels like, I don't know, it feels weird to me. It feels like you're making, I think it reminds me, do you remember we did it against the odds deck where the goal was to win, uh, not to win, but to draw the game? And it was incredibly convoluted, and it involved Lich's Tomb, I think. I don't know if you remember that episode. All right, so opponent's going to Assassin's Trophy. Sure. Uh, grab a forest. Mm-hmm. You still lose your Witch's Oven. You still don't have Corvald. Your clock is still super low. I mean, why <laughs> 20,000 Rhinos? I wonder, I do kind of just out of curiosity, uh, curiosity I do kind of wonder how many you can, uh, you can fit. But I remember from that episode that the goal was to draw the game and the response wasn't that good. Like uh, a lot of people didn't like it because it didn't feel like real magic to them. It didn't feel like real magic because the, because you weren't trying to win and in real magic you try to win. So I, that's what my fear would be with doing like a thousand, a thousand rhinos without having a actual excuse is that people would be like, I don't know, would be turned off by it because it's not real enough or whatever. 100 stone turn dignitary is an underrated card blinking stone or dignitary is a legit wow oh huh do they just cash in their liberator blow up spirited companion <laughs> okay you, you got us <laughs> well that makes teleportation circle a lot better <laughs> oh silver is a is a weird place on magic arena oh i see they're planning on meatballing anyway so they're like whatever yeah so we get meatballed we draw planes we play a planes one oh we need another black source hmm Yeah, let's just be patient. Let's get let's get Yari on. Let's play Teleportation Circle. We could rest in peace, but I don't really want to lock down the graveyard until Yagadim's Awakening, if I can help it. And their cat, they don't have a food, so they can't even get it back at the moment. Anabuja. Oh, God. Anabuja, welcome to the Vision Bowl. Well, now that's a problem. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super duper. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that is the best card our opponent could draw here by far. More rest in pieces. Hmm. Yeah, I think we just lose now. <sighs> Double rest in pieces is not great. Yeah. Teleportation Circle Yarian just doesn't do anything. I don't know what we do here. One, two. Are we just giving up on Agadim's Awakening? Maybe. Yeah, I guess we are. Rest in peace. Yarian. Haha! -ha. <laughs> Blink the rest in peace. Uh, good games. I mean, this, I think this is just like necessary because if we don't do this, then our opponent can just like go off with Cat Oven and this Corvold gets super huge. At least this slows the Corvold down. Maybe buys us enough time to draw a removal spell. Gilda Goose, that does feed the Corvold for a couple turns. 
opponent gets in, sacks, draws. Corvold is so strong. Ah, I don't like playing to try to win by time. Like, if we win by time, we win by time, but I, I don't like trying to win by time. Opponent. Well, we need to draw something. Oh, jeez. All right, opponent has drawn several of their best cards in a row. That's, uh, that is frightening. <laughs> Corvald into Mayhem Devil with the goose to make the food to sack. Well, okay. Well, that is one of our best cards in a row. Titan of Industry. Gain five. Make a four, four. That might, that might be enough. Hit ya with the Yarion. Oh, the Titan industry is so good. I don't know if the shield counter is that good. Our opponent, I think, has learned they can ping with the Mayhem Devil to remove it. <laughs> now that our opponent has learned that trick, it's it's much less effective of a strategy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have four rest in pieces. I mean, normally we just always want rest in peace against our opponent's deck, but there was just a weird, we had our one Aghanim's Awakening, so it was a little awkward to play it when we could reanimate, but uh, with the Corval now, we just got to do it. It's too risky not to. Shield's not bad, but they line up poorly with Mayhem Devil. No hold back to double block. I mean, in theory, the Titan can trade with this Corval, right? And at this point, like... We might be the aggro? <laughs> Titan of Industry just builds such a big board and gains us so much life. Like, we can go up to 18, make another 4-4, four, four, and then we take 7 and whatever, just smash you back for, like, a million? <laughs> Is our opponent salting out after all this, or are they trying to decide if they want to block with their Gilded Goose? Is this our opponent? I mean, I guess our opponent... Well, we did top deck the Titan, which was fortunate. And I guess we top deck the Siege Rhino. So I guess we did get <laughs> pretty lucky. We did get pretty lucky, I guess. <laughs> so I guess I could see why our opponent would be would be a little bit upset. We we did kind of top deck the perfect cards. Oh, yeah, I'm game five Mega Rhino. Up to 18. <laughs> Titan Industry busted. Oh, man, there are... So many good budget magics coming up. I, I haven't been this hyped about budget magic decks in uh, in a minute. I got a really good modern one and a really good pioneer one that will be coming up soon. And the standard one this week. What do you think of the standard living end deck? The standard living end deck I thought was pretty fun. <laughs> the games are so long, but I, I enjoyed playing it. Yeah, I mean, I can see why our opponent would be a little a little salty. We did run pretty well with our... At the very end, to like, top deck the Siege Rhino, top deck the Titan when our opponent was almost getting us. That's true. I mean, I guess our opponent also... They also ran pretty well. Although, it was twice in a row where it felt like our opponent was about to kill us, and we top decked something that could stabilize, like, the last possible turn. The only thing that would make this better is if we just rip a, rip a Rhino to blank... <laughs> <laughs> to what just left who spends a half hour who spends a half hour of their clock playing a game only to only to then give up um okay well charming prince scry ah yeah turtles such an underrated card i feel like turtles gonna be legit after uh after uh after rotation Opponent. Oh my god, opponent. <laughs> opponent is doing their best to time out now. <laughs> Silver. Silver. Uh, hey, Zeth. I wanted to run this question by you. I go to an EDH table. I bring a deck that's 100% proxy down to the basics, but it's purely flavorful and proxied because of custom art. It's running stuff like Lightning Bolt and Nimble Mongoose and EDH. Do you personally find an issue with that? Uh, personally? No, no, I don't care. <laughs> no, it really, really doesn't make a difference to me. Would there be some people that might find issue with that? I'm sure there probably would be some. Well, <laughs> that was an anticlimactic win, but that is a win. But personally, I that wouldn't that wouldn't make any difference to me at all, honestly. Oh, question. This was this is an interesting question. I don't know if any of you listened to the to the Commander Clash podcast that went up today on the the Commander YouTube. The like, are you a jerk one? 
uh, and it was about like, do certain actions in a commander game, like do they make you a jerk essentially? I thought the most interesting part of the conversation, how do you deal with this? How do you deal with the, the situation that I thought was, yeah, we got bounced way back. <laughs> we got bounced back to like Platinum last season and then just didn't really play a ton of arena. And then we got bounced back to like the very beginning. Um, the one that I found most interesting and I want your feedback on was the uh, one Krim bought up about control and the idea like, so someone shows up to your commander pod with a deck that you don't want to play against. And in the example, it was a control deck. Are you, are you a jerk if you're just like, I don't feel about, uh, I don't feel like playing against an archetype at the moment. I thought that was a really interesting question. Cause I feel like my thinking was you're not uh, like, you're obviously not a, a jerk for showing up with a control deck to a commander game. Like that's definitely doesn't make you a jerk. But at the same time, I felt like if you just really don't feel like playing against a certain archetype, I also don't really think that makes you a jerk. If you're just like, and eh, I don't know, I'm not in the mood for like a three hour game with a bunch of wraths. I don't think that makes you a jerk, uh, a jerk either. Like, so I think it goes both, like in a perfect world, I think everyone would find pods that have the same expectations and want the same things. So is this sacrifice again? <laughs> is this sacrifice again? Is a three hour game with a bunch of rats every EDH game ever? Eh, I mean, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> I love your streams, but I find it weird that you were annoyed by someone running the clock when sometimes you tab over a website to look at cards mid-game and take time doing unrelated activities. Maybe the opponent's doing the same. Uh, I mean, I guess that's possible. Although I, I think it was a... It's probably, a, I would say, a little bit suspicious that that happened after we top deck Titan of Industry and they just... Well, I timed out, roped out for three straight turns. I think that's a little different than, than uh, just someone perhaps generally not paying attention. Well, Skyclave, go. Imagine that you're in tennis and you withdraw because you don't want to play against someone with a power game. But the difference, so I would say in modern, uh, then I would say you were being a jerk. Like if. If you're playing a competitive a competitive format like modern and someone shows up with their prison deck or something and you somehow try to refuse to play it to me that would be really weird because the whole point is to win and everything's fair game but commander it's like a it's like a casual format and the points to have fun so if you think like you're not going to enjoy playing against a certain archetype are you under some obligation to play against that archetype like uh, I don't know. I kind of lean towards no, just because of the casual nature of the format. Because the whole, like, if you go to your local park, that's that's actually a good example. You go to your local park to play, and Serena Williams is there. Are you under an obligation to, like, get smashed by <laughs> Serena Williams when you're just, like, wanting to hit the ball around at your park for fun? I, I would say probably not. Well, Rhino number one, go. And we if we untap with this and it doesn't die, these Touch of the Spirit Realms can do a lot of Rhino blinking. That's a lot of Lightning Helixes. Ponit sex, the blood discards, the land untaps. Aww. All right, Rhino temporarily down. All right, there's, there's more Rhinos where that came from. Down to 17. We draw land. Spirited Companion. Oh, there's the Titan of Industry. Um, hmm. Hmm. We really wanted that Rhino to remain alive. Now, let's get Yari on. Hit ya. Down to 15. If I go to my local pike and Serena really must curse me in tennis, I'm taking the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I guess I probably would too, just for the for the experience of it. Are people whining about commander decks again? No, we had a we did a podcast today about examples of uh commander actions, whether or not they make you like a, a jerk, <laughs> essentially. And uh 
one of them that came up was someone wanting to wanting to play a deck that you don't didn't feel like playing against. Are you a are you a jerk if you decline to play with with someone for that reason? All right, Bone Crusher number two. We're down to eleven. We need to get to this Titan of Industry somehow. It seems like Titan of Industry is always a solution to all of our problems. Opponent thinking. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to do the the PG the PG version. <laughs> if Brad Nelson comes to my local park and wants to crush me at CDH. I'm taking the opportunity. What if Brad Nelson comes to your local park and wants to crush you with tennis though? That's the that's the real question. <laughs> that is the real question. How do you feel about Brad Nelson and tennis? Uh, all right, Brutal Cathar the token. Touch the spirit realms. A bone crusher. Go. I mean, we basically just need to land for the Titan of Industry, and I'll feel relatively good about where we're at. Opponent. <laughs> Universe of Beyond has been interesting. I think I've I've come to believe that it's just if it's all about the IP. <laughs> Like if people like the IP, then they're gonna like the the layer drop or whatever. But if they don't like the IP, they're gonna complain about it. Like, <sighs> it's so much better if these live. Yeah, let's just plug with Spiriting Companion. I don't really want to go to seven with the creature land out. Oh, it's, it's super, super hypocritical for sure. <laughs> very, very hypocritical. Graveyard Trespassa. All right. This would be the perfect turn for a Titan of Industry or a Siege Rhino. We will also accept a Siege Rhino. <laughs> Either one. I've never played Warhammer. Is Warhammer actually fun? Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we gotta wait. Next turn, next turn. So Yarion, Blink, the Brutal Cathar. Get it back, get rid of Bone Crusher. Opponent, Trium. <laughs> uh, I mean, Vince looks like he has fun playing it. I mean, a lot of magic is complaining, right? Isn't, I mean, if you, if you think about the magic community, what are we good at? We're good at being technically right about things that don't really matter. That's, uh, that's, that's us. Um, we're good at, uh, at card games, obviously. Pretty, I think in general, pretty intelligent and incredibly good at complaining. That is, that might be our, our S tier trait, actually. If you really, <laughs> if you really dig down into it, there's not many communities that complain, uh, complain like, uh, like we can. <laughs> that is, that's us. <laughs> uh, being wrong about what cards does. Yes, yes, yeah. Not reading the card. That's usually the reason for that. Uh, we have a new donation from Master Frogger85, $5 donation. Hey, Seth, I'm trying to build a red-black modern deck. I'm curious if there are fetches that are better than others, as in, is Marsh Flats, sorry, I'm going to kill the Yarion. Is, uh, for example, is Marsh Flats better than Verticanicombs or vice versa for any black mana, or does it not uh, matter? Uh, it really makes... It really makes no difference. Uh, so obviously, you're playing a red-black deck, um, Bloodstained Mire will be the best fetch because it'll get black or red basics untapped and get a mountain or a swamp. After you have your four Bloodstained Mires, uh, then it really stops. It really stops making a difference after that. Well, Titan of Industry, gain five. Maybe we should shield counter. I do kind of want this to survive a turn. Gain five, shield counter. 
play the land. Because if this survives, then we can touch with the spirit realms. It hits you with the brutal Cathar past the turn. So after you have the, the on color fetch, then it really stops. There's no difference between a Marsh Flats and a Verdant Catacombs. Um, they do exactly the same thing. The only very small consideration is sometimes you'll see people, you play your four, uh, Bloodstained Myers, and then after that you play like one Verdant Catacomb, one Marsh Flats, or two of each. Technically, it's like better against Pithing Needle, or better against Surgical Extraction, although I don't think I've honestly ever seen those interactions actually matter in practice it's like so big brained and unlikely that someone's gonna like surgical one of your fetch lands and you're gonna get wrecked by it or something that it really often doesn't actually matter so so yeah uh it really doesn't yeah it's <laughs> i've seen pithing oop i've seen pithing needle on fetch lands that is a thing that i've actually seen before so that actually can occasionally happen okay so if we go to combat this is gonna be pretty good. Hit you with the Titan of Industry. Opponent takes it. Channel touch the Spirit Realm. Blink the Titan of Industry. Yes. End of turn. It comes back. Make a four four game five. Pass the turn. Opponent out to eight. And I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. Oh, I think I missed a sub too. Uh, who, who was it? Captain Norvgood for the 26 month. Uh, Dead by Daylight fans are better at complaining. What is uh, what is Dead by Daylight? Is that a uh, is that a band? It sounds like a. It sounds like a. <laughs> something core band name. <laughs> Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for the subscription. Big subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. About it. Shadra takes out. Kills our four four. Graveyard Glutton, looking. Are we going for lethal? Do we draw a Siege Rhino? We draw a Brutal Cathar. Ugh. What do you think of, what do you think of that new Shieldred? Do you think that new Shieldred is busted? I kind of think it's very underrated. I kind of think it's like secretly busted. I'll go to combat. Attack you. The question is, do we attack with, mm. Oh, probably not. <laughs> I kind of think New Shieldred is busted. Just looking at this scenario where this where this Ward 1 means we're like never going to kill this graveyard trespasser. Could you imagine Ward 2? We would have to we would have to wait a two more turns of drawing cards without doing anything to be able to brutal Cathara. It's like so unlikely that we're actually going to be able to kill it. Uh it was a it was a leak. I uh, I am also not 100% sure that it's real. Although Although it was a potato camera. The potato camera seemed realistic. The formatting seemed realistic enough. Uh, but yes, it is. <laughs> Opponents going out uh, going out on their own terms. I can respect that. <laughs> very, very good. I was like, it was like a leaked children, which uh, not, not official. Unsure that it's, unsure that it's actually real. Uh, it very well could not actually be real. Hmm. Well, that went well. Do we even change anything? Maybe we broke it. Maybe we broke it with Siege Rhino. The potato camera it does suggest real. <laughs> every every spoil uh, spoiler seem, or leak it seems to have the potato camera. Leaks that are pictures of cards. Yeah, that is true. They usually either immediately realize it's fake or or end up being real in the long run. I mean, I think it could be real. I think it would, I just saw a lot of people saying it was bad. And I don't think it's bad. I think, I think people underestimate the power of Ward 2. <laughs> Ward discard 2 is like, oh my God, it's so many cards. It's so many cards. You're like mind twisting yourself to, I mean, it, assuming it is real. But I just thought it was funny. People are like, oh, it looks so horrible. If it's real, it's bad. Oh, I think it's, I think it's probably really good. I think that just Ward discard 2 is, it's not hex proof, but it's pretty that's about as close as you can get with ward i think like ward discard two cards jeez that is oy, 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 oy. remember when vorinclex was like people were like no way that was real oh, vorinclex is such a good card remember when vorinclex came out and we 
played it in standard and it was so sweet and then no one ever played it again <laughs> uh it must have been like a, a first week of standard thing where it just lined up really well with what everyone was doing with the new cards and we just crush people but then boring like sometimes you see as like a one of in a mono green deck but it's never really done anything in standard yeah graveyard ward discard one on graveyard trespasser is already annoying ward discard two it really it might as well be hexproof might as well be hexproof do we even change anything i guess we can go down the asharn for apollo man maybe massacre worm for apollo let's let's try it like that oh i realized today that <laughs> i feel like this this alchemy set wizards i think they're pretty they're pretty smart I have like 40% collected, even though I have not been trying to collect it. Just from like, I guess I did a couple of drafts uh, when it first came out. But I have like 40% of the set collected just from all the free packs I get just from playing Arena. So I think that uh, Wizards kind of like, kind of made everyone get alchemy cards in their collection. It'll be interesting to see if it works and if people actually start playing the format. But I realize that I just like incidentally have a ton of those cards now. Oh, also, <laughs> speaking of Arena, I mentioned this on Twitter. I, I I was doing something special that you'll you'll probably see in the in the future. Something we've been working on, but uh, I was play I was playing a deck that had Channel in it, and I I learned that uh, <laughs> Arena's Auto Tapper it literally will kill you with Channel. It will add. A deadly amount of mana before it will take and before it will take it uh tap a mana dork <laughs> it actually prioritizes putting your life from one to zero to make one more colorless mana with channel before it taps a, a lana or elves <laughs> that's like the most extreme version of <laughs> of the auto tapper just doing auto tapper things <laughs> hey what's up christmas how are you Fable of the Meow Brega. Well, uh, Brutal Cathar. Snag the token. Smack you with the Skyclave down to 60 to put her to depths. We could use a land at some point. Opponent. Uh, OG Channel is not... It is on Arena, but it's not actually legal in any in any format. It is banned everywhere. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I guess we should probably... Do you think this deck has Meatball? Meatball would be really bad. I want to just pressure, but if we keep putting things under Skyclaves and they Wrath, we're going to get so wrecked. And we got to discard a card to get rid of the Trespasser. Hmm. That's also awkward. Well, land on green. Where's our rhinos? Where's our rhinos? Yeah, the meatball. That one definitely. That one definitely came from Crim. Yeah, I guess getting rid of the fable might be better. Maybe, maybe what we do is just blink this skyclave. Their token doesn't really matter, and that's a little protection from Meat Hook Massacre. That might actually be the way to go. Yeah, let's do that. Charming Prince. So, Pony gets a 2-2, which is fine. And then we will get rid of Fable of the Mirror Breaker. <laughs> what is Krim's name for, uh, for Torbrad? <laughs> wow, opponent getting frisky. Uh, well, block and block and <clears throat> block and block. So if we can get rid of the trespasser, our opponent probably has removal of some kind. Hey, what's up, Daniel? How are you? Good to see you. Is your editor the one who is adding all the memes to your YouTube videos? I thought the hippo fighting the alligator was top tier. Oh, I, I did that. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Some, sometimes when you see a, an editor's note, it's actually, 
I, I am actually the editor. Other times, like Commander Clash, Neochoke is actually editing it. If it's in one of my videos, chances are I actually edit it. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but a lot of people didn't seem to get it. <laughs> uh... Hey, babe, thank you, Christmas. All right, draw with, uh, hmm, okay. Touch the spirit realms, this is awkward. Get in, hit ya. Where's our mana? Where's our rhinos? No mana, no rhinos. Ah, not good. We have a new donation from Alex Mateo. $10 donation. Hey, Zeth. Just want to say, uh, I always love your content and it cheers me up, especially in these trying times as my dad was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Oh, Alex, that is, I'm sorry. Uh, that is super hard. Thank you for the donation. Oh, yeah, that is very tough. I have a I have a sister who's had a brain tumor. Thankfully, it's not uh, malignant, so, but it's it's been a an issue for a long a long time for her. So yeah, I, I kind of know a little bit about that. But yeah, that's that's definitely scary. All the best to your dad. Hopefully, hopefully they can. Uh, is it treatable? Hopefully, there's. I think in some cases they can remove it, which is probably the best outcome if it's possible. So, well, definitely uh, hope they can get that figured out. Dragabos, and thank you for the donation. Dragabos, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Block and blank opponents. So wow, gonna kill it. Make us discard. All that to avoid a blank. I mean, if we can get this, if we draw a land to play the workshop war chief. Okay, there's a land. That's that's what we were looking for. Workshop War Chief. Gain three life. Get a big body. Not quite Titan of Industry. Not quite Siege Rhino, but basically a Thrag Tusk. Um, you know what the Skyclave? Have you ever done a video with Professor Command Zone people? Ah, uh, so Prof came on Commander Clash at one point but i don't think i've ever done other than that i don't think i've done a video with prof uh if i ever make it out to uh to the west coast unfortunately i feel like i'm on the wrong side of the country for all that stuff so many of like prof command zone even most of the goldfish people are all on the west coast and i'm on the east coast and i know that's probably not <laughs> probably not a great excuse but it is a long it is a it is just a long annoying trip so I don't get to the West Coast uh, very much. Prof's new gameplay series is very sweet though. If I ever get a chance, I would definitely uh, definitely do Prof's gameplay series. LRR is out West too. Like, what is there any, I guess like down South more on the East Coast is the SCG stuff, but SCG doesn't really do content anymore. I'm trying to think like what, what content there really is in the East Coast. Hmm. I don't play a tap land. Skyclave, the fable of the mirror breaker. We're not going to let our opponent start looting. Yeah, I guess we should not attack. Pass the turn. <laughs> oh, it is a, it is a trampled by turtle shirt. As far as uh, bluegrass goes, I, I actually... Oh, no. Wow! That is not something I expected, and now we're super dead. <laughs> and we draw even more lands. Yeah, that is a... Uh, huh. <laughs> oh, silver. Silk. <laughs> and bonus says good game. All right, so our opponent's Rakdos aggro deck is playing Extinction Event. I guess that's uh, that's good to be good to be aware of. Good to be aware of that that's a possibility. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Well, I guess we can bring a Knight of Autumn right like that. Remember when cards got animations? I know, back in the, the Eldrain days, everything had animation. Now nothing gets animation. Could have blocked with Hive and live. Yeah, but I don't think we had any way of winning from there. Like, we could block with Hive, chump with Hive, go to one or something, and then we just don't have anything that's going to 
Even if we draw our best card, which is what? Titan of Industry? Which I don't know if we had the mana to cast. But I don't think there was any any draws that actually makes us win from there. <laughs> when are they going to fix the Sound on Arena? <laughs> They've had multiple updates since uh, the sound bugs started happening. And I don't know. It's either a bug. Either Wizards just really doesn't care. Or maybe the bug is like super hard to fix for some reason. I don't know. I'm so clueless on programming stuff. But... All right, where's, where's our Siege Rhinos? Ooh. All right, no Siege Rhinos, but we do have a Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon, two card draw creatures. We did see Coligan's Command, which makes me sad. We're going to see my favorite card get wrecked by Coligan's Command. <laughs> have you played any Paper Magic since the Commander event? Uh, no. No, I don't think I have since uh, Command Fest Richmond or whatever it was. There were no patch notes with the recent update, I'm guessing never. Yeah, I can't believe they're... I don't know, it seems like a relatively big quality of life thing that, that you should probably fix. Tap land for R E P. Ooh, teleportation circle too. All right, uh, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Elvish, we might get to see Panharmonicon go off in 2022. In 2022 on Magic Arena. We might get to see some... Don't thought sees us. Don't thought sees us. About it. Oh, we will Panharmonicon so quick. And we got Teleportation Circle. Do I ever play Historic Brawl? I actually might have a Historic Brawl video coming out at some point soon. Historic Brawl is a format that I've just recently started playing. Well, there's a Panharmonicon. There's a Temple Garden. Pass the turd. If you call against command this opponent, we are no longer uh, we are no longer friends. <laughs> opponent, I see you looking. I s opponent. <laughs> opponent, no. He was attacking. All right, we'll take we'll take three. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. They didn't they didn't blow it up. So we get to. Spirited Companion. Opponent. He still have gold against command mana, technically. Ha! Double trigger. Draw two. Panharmonicon value. Okay, where's the rhino? Oh, there's the rhino. There's the rhino. We're living that. We're living the dream. We're living the dream. Boom. Rhino. Panharmonicon. Here it comes. Double lightning helix. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> Yes! Sex of Blood token! We, we did it! We did it! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> oh, you think our opponent was watching the stream and they heard me say we weren't friends? And they're like, oh, I I want to be friends with Saffron Olive. <laughs> we will let the Vandermonicon live. I didn't even consider that. I guess... <laughs> Technically, that's possible. Our opponent was, like, stream sniping and took me seriously. <laughs> okay. And now we get to Teleportation Circle with Rhino and Panharmonicon. Oh, this is... This is the best day ever. This is what Arena was missing. This is what they were missing. Uh, Teleportation Circle. Land untapped. Yarion. Bonus does good game. No attacks. Blink the Rhino. Double trigger. Up to 23. <laughs> Down to 8. About it. Lan. Uh huh. I think we're going to get him. Rhino. Yes, Kelly Toss. Good card. But not Rhino good. <laughs> if we draw Rhino here, we just win. Brutal Cathar. Oh, that's actually also pretty good. Well, okay. Uh, can we win here somehow? If we swing with everything, they kill Rhino. Hmm. Well, let's Yariad. Blank, blank. End of, uh, end of turn. 
get him back. Draw two. Helix times two. Opponent to two, and there's a Titan of Industry in a Rhino. Oh, this deck is so sweet. <laughs> Oh, so good. We're playing to we're playing to blink rhinos. Come on now. Come on. Now. We're not gonna win by attacking. Attacking. We got a panharmonicon and a rhino and a teleportation circle. <laughs> we gotta get the we gotta get the flavor voids. Uh, uh, a quick reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you get them at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. So what do you do you wanna try do you wanna try the, the Abzan mid-range build? What do you what do you think? So we got to see Panharmonica and go off. Are you interested in a more like normal mid rangey build of Panharmonica or not Panharmonica of Siege Rhino, or should we just keep a uh, trying Panharmonica on people? Ooh, Ganti. We haven't seen Ganti yet. There are there are some tireless trackers, of course. <laughs> I don't know if it's good. It's very influenced by the new cards. Update the record. Oh boy. Somehow we've been playing for an hour and a half and we're only 2-0, and oh, but we'll take it. The games have been long. Ooh, green, white. Is this a Siege Rhino battle? Um, hmm. Uh, all right. So, Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Five color Rhino clones. We haven't we haven't tried to deck build a uh, based around copying Rhino on Arena yet. We could. Clint Sleeve Siphoner. Ooh. Maybe our opponent's playing Abzan mid-range. Well we can see if it's any good before <laughs> before we think about playing it. Uh let's attack first. Who knows? Maybe they trade their Dark Confidant for a spirited companion. Uh well in that case. Let's touch the spirit realm. Get rid of the Zyphoner. I'm brewing Mardu Warriors with Alicia, determined to make it playable. Ah, you know what I want is, ooh, there's the Trigerless Tracker. Opponent's playing exactly what we were talking about, like exactly. Uh, Play this on green. Hmm. So many options. Yeah, let's let's Gonti. Gonti you. Yes. <laughs> we will take your siege rhino. <laughs> we just gotta make sure we don't blink that we don't blink this one. That would be unwise about it. I mean, I think people wow, Ether Hub too. I guess it makes sense with uh with Glint Sieve. I guess people think it's like Dark Confidant, and it's kinda like Dark Confidant, but you really need more Wow, opponent's got rhinos for days. Rhino passes. Well, now we need to use Sharn so we hit our land drops. And I guess it stops this clue <laughs> accidentally. New attacks. Yeah, this is gonna be Rhino Wars. A Rhino clone deck could be fun on Arena. Have we tried Siege Rhino Pioneer with Eldritch Evolution and Dorks? Ooh, I haven't. Although that, I uh, I think the main way we've played it in Pioneer. <laughs> These trackers are getting wrecked by Yasharn. Um, I think the main way we played it in Pioneer was, we tried a normal mid-range deck and also played it in the... Sure. And also played it in a Enigmatic Incarnation deck. All right, so. I has got one card, one Rhino. Now let's, let's Rhino. Gain a bit of life. Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Pass the turn. I think our teleportation circle is going to best these tireless draggers here. We really want the Yasharn to... Well, okay. We are going to say we wanted it to live because of these clues, but I guess that's fine. But as a clue, grows their dorks. And... Passes. I'll play a Siege Rhino. 
Elvish Visionary, draw a card. Lair of the Hydra, no attacks. It's gonna be a good Yarion. Going to be a good Yarion. Hey, what's up, Jeremy Cello? Good to see you, good to see you. Hey, see you, Free Jazz. Thanks for hanging out. Have I played Rhinos and Commander Clash? I think I did a long... Wow, so many trackers, golly. That is a lot of tireless tracking going on over there. Opponent. Passes. Well, okay, Yarion. Yarion. One, two, three, four. I guess I can have the Siphoner back now. I think we'd rather get rid of a Tracker, probably. No attacks. Everything returns. Get rid of a Tracker. Drain you. Oh, come on, non -land. Not, oh my god, three lands. <laughs> well, those were the worst draws about it. Yeah, apparently Yarian can't even uh, target cards that you don't own. I didn't realize that, but it wouldn't even let us choose our opponent's Rhino. So I guess they they formatted it to make sure that wouldn't happen. Yeah, well, that's less lands to draw. That's true. <laughs> the deck is officially thinned. Yeah, Teleportation Circle is going to be sweet. Panharmonicon would be sweet if we could get it down. About it. I don't like how many cards our opponent's able to draw with. Wow. Really? Hmm. Okay, we gotta think about this. How do we do this? So this is a bad Rhino. They can sack two clues. Something like that, probably. Yeah, that's that seems fine. I mean, we get to kill the Rhino for free, basically. And maybe kill a Tireless Tracker. Worst case, they, like, kill Spirited Companion, crack a clue, we lose their Rhino that we can't blink anyway. So I think the downside is minimal. Found it looking at everything. All right, Assassin's Trophies, Yarion. Okay. Sure. But all this does is make the rhinos bounce off each other. Okay. I mean, this works out fine. So opponent still loses tireless dragger. Oh, okay. All right, so opponent had a handful of removal. Not, oh my goodness, that is yet another land. Holy. Spirited Companion. <laughs> land or Elves, not good. Well, land teleportation circle. This flood is getting us. It is getting us a lot. To the point where we might just be, we might be dead now because we've just drawn a ridiculous. Okay, maybe we're not quite dead. That's a titan of industry. We have still drawn one, opponents one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> We've drawn 14, our opponent's drawn 7. There is a pretty pretty big difference. Pretty big difference there. Up. Jeez. Um. All right, opponent. Wandering Emperor kills the Rhino. Well, everything's coming up opponent at the moment. I mean, life is good when you when you draw non-lands, that's for sure. One, two, three, four, five. 
All right, I'll play this. Let's see if this is enough. Titan of Industry. Double triggers. Four, four. Five life. Four, four, five life. <laughs> no attacks. Blank Titan of Industry. Double triggers. Four, four, five life. Four, four, shield counter on Titan of Industry. Oh, Monicon showing its worth. <laughs> Things were looking so bad. Things were looking so bad. I mean, wiping out the clues I don't think does much while your opponent still has double tireless tracker. Like, they're just going to be making so many more clues that I think that it's a relatively losing battle. Yeah, I mean, I guess we kind of are. <laughs> we're kind of a 100 Rhino deck, aren't we? Just not the, not the Siege Rhinos at the moment. <laughs> I mean, the land worked out there that we had 11 mana so we could paint our Monica and Titan of Industry in the same turn, which I guess is something. About it. First strikes the Sea Shrino. Paradise Druid. Ooh, Skyclave, okay. Well, that's not the worst. That can get rid of these tireless trackers, I assume. Double triggers. Tireless tracker. Tireless tracker. So the card advantage in engine is not... I mean, maybe all these lands are going to end up being a blessing. No attacks. Blank the Titan of Industry. Oh, <laughs> what a comeback. What a, co that was so bad. Our opponent had like 30, 30 power of creatures. We had nothing going on. And uh, I mean, Panharmonicon is a good card. When it actually sticks on the battlefield, Panharmonicon is a legit good card. <laughs> oh. So, attacking there, I mean, I guess we could have got in with some of the 4-4s, four probably. But I really wanted to make sure we didn't lose the Titan of Industry. Like, Titan of Industry with the shield counter on it is very difficult for our opponent to kill. And then it essentially just, it wins us a game. With Panharmonic on and Teleportation Circle, every turn we're getting 8 power and some combination of, like, 10 life or whatever shield counters. So, I feel like we just we just win if we don't lose the shield counter i don't know how our opponent can keep up with that and then our trackers were gone too so our opponent didn't even have the option to to try to just uh go toe to toe with us and card advantage anymore without a hmm tulsimer tulsimer might not be worth it someday we're gonna get someone with the <laughs> with the massacre worm and it's gonna be glorious I don't know if that's today, but you know, maybe just bring in two fatal pushes. Run it like that. I feel like uh, you win if you kill your opponent instead of holding back. <laughs> but how many how many uh, blinks can we get? How many rhinos can we make if our opponent's dead? Have we played a deck around Quaza yet? We played a deck called Quaza's Mastery at one point on Against Odds. It was a Quaza combo deck. It was okay. The combo's kind of sweet. Like Quaza Lich's Mastery is a two card combo. Battle Wits, I don't know why they don't add Battle Wits to, to Arena. They really should. Digital is the perfect place for Battle Wits. Ooh, Massacre Worm Hand. Digital is the perfect place for Battle Wits because... Ooh, and a Rhino. Okay, things are, uh, things are looking up. It's the perfect place because you don't have to... You don't have to shuffle a 250 card deck, which is... Probably the biggest uh, drawback, I would say. Probably the biggest drawback uh, of it is... You know what? Let's get in there. If you want to trade, that's fine. Opponent takes it. So, yeah, they really should. Can Arena handle a 250-card deck? Technically? 
I mean, it should be able to handle whatever, I think, or a higher number than that, but I, you can play a 250 card deck on Arena. Well, uh, looks like Rhino time to me. Yeah, land on white. Rhino. Drain you. Maybe we're the better Rhino deck. Oh, let me see Magikarp. What do you think of this deck, Magikarp? It, uh, it reminds me a little bit of your uh, the Blink deck you've been working on. There's some similarities, at least. Charming Prince. Oh, I thought our opponent was like mid-range, but they're kind of blinky, too. Some Bant Blink action, eh? Well, I, I like that you've you found a way to get the, the Rhinos in there. I appreciate the Rhinos. I like the Lotus Cobra Ramp and Ruinous Ultimatum. If you can get to that, that really gets people. One, two, three... We need one more black source? Hmm. Well, Spirited Companion, draw a guard. Here's a black source. Ooh. All right. Next turn, this deck is sweet. Next turn, we might have a, a little bit of a massacre. Just a little massacre. <laughs> Yo, Seth, about a bit over a month ago, you raided me. Just wanted to say thanks again. I felt bad because I took a hiatus right after, so it felt like I wasted your kindness, but I'm back. Thanks again. You're awesome. Hey, Homebrew Gaming. Hopefully you had a, a good hiatus. Everyone needs a break once in a while. That is, that's, I mean, an important part of making uh, content, I think, is is being okay with, it took me a long time to to try to learn to be okay with taking a, taking a break once in a while. Well, uh, Massacre? This one's gonna hurt, opponent. <laughs> you get to keep your Knight of Autumn, though. But you lose all your mana and your Charming friends. <laughs> no one expects a Massacre Worm. All right, opponent kills it. Well, that does save them a bit of damage. The trigger still happens, though. Get in, hit ya. And we still have Yariad. So I think we're, I mean, we're fine here. We could use a Rhino, but opponent gets and hits us. Touch the Spirit Realm. So, well, okay. Spirit of Companion. Draw a card. Hmm. Get in, hit you for one. Well, I guess we just Yari in to draw more cards. Hey Seth, how was your weekend? Oh, it was pretty good. I was, I was still a little nervous about uh, about Bear with his raccoon adventure, but uh, it went it went well. Thankfully, Bear's Bear's gonna be fine. Didn't do anything uh, too exciting. So many lands. I feel like Spirited Companions are very likely to draw lands. <laughs> uh, loving the rhinos. As soon as they were announced, I thought of you instantly. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. I think I've played more rhinos than anyone, honestly. <laughs> Did he get scratched? His face was a bit a bit scratched up. R apparently, apparently raccoons. I didn't realize this, but oh wow, that's kind of brutal. Um, hmm. Do we brutal? How do we do this? I mean. Amiria's call is pretty good, I guess. <laughs> Might as well. MDF Z power, just run it out. Why not? Hit you with the Yarion. Uh I didn't realize this, but raccoons, they they go for a dog's eyes and they and they also try to get them flipped around so they can like rip into their soft underbelly. Uh so thankfully, Bear, he he got it less bad than it could have been there actually are cases of of uh of dogs like uh, getting killed i don't know about bear's pretty big i don't know if raccoons it would be pretty disappointing as much as bear is not a not a fighter he's a lover not a fighter um <laughs> uh it would be pretty disappointing if he died to a raccoon because he is a lot bigger than a raccoon but he just doesn't <laughs> He's not a fighting kind of dog. He's just he's just so gentle and lazy and chill that that's just not his personality. So I don't even I didn't even know he knew how to fight. Who attacked who first? So the raccoon was the one that that uh started the started the the fight. Bear didn't 
seem like he really so i couldn't see the beginning of it i was uh, i told the story earlier in the stream we're uh we we're taking a walk and there's one spot that we walk where you go like down down a hill and at the bottom of the hill there's a pond and usually when we walk by there bear will run down and like he likes he loves the water and so he runs down and like takes a swim in the pond and then comes back up and finishes walking so he ran down to the pond like normal and it's kind of off in the distance so you can't see super well and it seemed like everything was normal until we started to hear just like screeching and these horrible animal fighting noises. And that's what made me go down to the pond to try to figure out what was going on because it wasn't normal. So by the time I got there, they were locked into quite the, quite the battle. With the raccoon trying to like scratch Bear's eyes, I guess, like his face, his eyes, and Bear would <laughs> didn't know what to do. He'd kind of jump in and jump back out and wasn't sure what to do. So it, it went like that for a while, and then eventually Bear Bear did end up putting an end to it. But it took <laughs> they were fighting for like five minutes or something. It was not a not like a quick little thing. Well, run out more elves. Oh yeah, we're three zero now, aren't we? Maybe Siege Rhino's just... Oh, no. Is this fight rigging? That's a little scary. We even played our Besage you. Well, okay. Save us, Workshop Warchief, I guess. Workshop Warchief. Gain some life past the turn. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Opponent's doing big, scary things. Gets in. I mean, we'll just kill it. Block, block. Get rid of the shakedown, heavy. We get a 4-4. Four, four. How do we beat a Great Henge, though? Great Henge is so much value. Well, go to combat. Smack ya. About it. Down to 10. Siege Rhino U. Down to 7. Opponent gains 2. <laughs> does Siege Rhino look... How does Siege Rhino look in 2022? When you see stuff like Great Henge running around and so forth. Does Siege Rhino still look... Like, if you're a new player, does it still look like a powerful magic card? Or do you see it compared to, like, Shakedown Heavies and Regisars and Great Henges? And it doesn't look very good. I'm really curious what... I'm really curious what a new player thinks of Siege Rhino today. Hmm. So this is four? One, two, three, four. I don't know how we get out of this. All right, play this on black. This might be a loss. I'm not sure we can win from here. Discard the channel land. Mail some cards. Get back. Huh. Brutal Cathar. Get rid of Shakedown Heavy past the turn. Opponent's got a discard. Okay, has Assassin's Trophy. Ah, and this means I get to draw with Great Henge. <laughs> Great Henge is too good, it's too good. Pelucrin is Unchained, that's also massive. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Sure, this is fine. Opponent gets in for a million. We take it. <laughs> There's a Panharmonicon. Probably a bit too late. I'll get you, Arion. Play, Arion. Blink the Siege Rhino. Hmm. Should our deck have Great Hench? I guess that's the real question. Like, Great Henge is a card that is letting our opponent win. Maybe, maybe we, I mean, we could play Great Henge. 
But the card advantage is just, that is totally what's letting our opponent win this game. Turn Timber Symbiosis into another Shakedown Heavy and into another card. Opponent goes on a huge attack. Now, um, block, block, block. Drop to 11. We need a good draw. We need a good draw to go with our Panamonicon. It's a land. All right. Well, not the right time for that. Yeah, hinges. I mean, when Henge comes down, it is so incredibly strong. I think it's like pretty un like straight up unbeatable for the most part. <laughs> the amount of card advantage it generates. What this deck really wants is Eldritch Evolution. So I think Eldritch Evolution would be sweet. I think we would probably have to rebuild the deck quite a bit to support it. So we have two drops that are good at sacking. Three drops aren't especially sackable. But being able to, like, Spirited Companion draw a card get a Siege Rhino, like, that is, that is pretty sweet. So I can see that being good. Oh, this feels like, this might be the matchup that's going to be hard to win. This feels tough. How do we stop the Great Henge? That's the question. Or Fight Rigging. Like, Fight Rigging can just combo into, can combo into stuff that you just can't really beat. We have removal for the creatures, but if they get the Great Henge down first, oh, I don't even know what we do about that. What we can do about that. Well, maybe something like that. What about cutting some lands? Ah, uh, can maybe add some MDFCs. I don't think we wanna, I don't know if we wanna cut lands. The deck is, yeah. The deck, oh boy. Well, maybe we just chalk this up to sometimes the magic gods don't want you to win. <laughs> uh, so we're going to keep this. There's some miracle world where we just draw lands and and cast our hand and we're all right. But not good. Not good. Not even a little good. Uh, Land of where elves go. Opponent. Thought seizes. Um, apparition. It's good against. It's good against the creatures. It's not especially good against. Oh boy, not especially good against a uh, great henge. Like that's the that's the problem card. Oh god. Okay. Well, <laughs> one land, one keep. I blame chat. I, I just so it's clear, I didn't think about cutting lands. It was it was chat that spoke of cutting lands. Yeah, now they can just mow down our board and well that was just uh not much magic played during that during that game. We in Scry and turn two with Prince to find lands. Elf is kinda like a land. Yeah, I could see an argument ugh, for cutting elves. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Like, you could cut the elves and play Thraven Inspectors and stuff. The question is, do you need... Uh, do you need to get to your Siege Rhinos and so forth faster? Because that's all that the elves really do. Like, are, are they a necessary evil? Like, in a perfect world, you never have to. Hey, what's up, Nalakilla? I'm glad it, uh, I'm glad it worked out. Sorry to send the same message, but I went out to get this food. I sent you a deck. I hope you like the list. Ooh, let me, let me see, Daniel. Uh, well, Triumgo. Yorion Garuda. Ooh. Yeah, we played Garuda in, uh, in Explore not too long ago, and it's actually pretty good. I, I have not seen non-companion builds. That's definitely unique to see it. Or I, actually, is it supposed to be a companion? Oh, you can't for Eldritch Evolution. Interesting. I wonder if it's worth it. So you get Eldritch Evolution, but you lose getting to play Garuda as a companion. It's definitely definitely spicy for sure. I haven't seen a I haven't seen that game plan. Shadow Sphere, what is our opponent doing? Uh, well, land on white. Spirited companion draw a card. Oh. 
Yeah, you have Yarion as a companion, but normally, like, the whole idea of Garuda is... The deck is basically just, like, you gotta resolve Garuda. None of the other stuff... None of the other stuff really matters. Because you're playing so many things that are, like, specifically for... For the Garuda chain, like Wisp Weaver Angels and Viziers and Spark Doubles and uh, Alter Egos. So it's a, it's definitely a, a unique a, a unique build of Garuda for sure. Rem Carlos. Huh. Okay. That's also unique. Well, uh, land untapped. Touch the Spirit Realm. They're trying to play Burn? Are we getting burnt? Is that what's happening? Get rid of Rem Carlos. Hit you with the dog. Pass the turn. About it. Gideon Blackblade. I walk a righteous path. Uh, annoying. Well, charming. Uh, actually, okay, hit Gideon. Gotta hit the Gideon first. Hit the Gideon. Charming Prince. Blink the Companion. Play the tap land. Draw a card. It does feel like we draw a lot of lands, though. Maybe we could cut back... Maybe we could, like, cut back a land? Huh. I don't know. It does feel like we've had a lot of games where we end up with a ton of lands in hand. Angel Fire Ign... What is going on in our opponent's deck? Okay. <laughs> sure, so I guess we're kind of dying. Uh, all right, that's that's a good one. Skyglaive Apparition. That is a good one. So much for this dying plan. I prefer I prefer the non-dying option. Uh, Overgrown Tomb, hit ya. Well, that was a clutch Skyglaive for sure. About it. And now we get to gain back some like for the War Chief, which is nice. More MDFCs could be the... That's always a solution to all of life's problems. Outlaw's Merriment. Huh? Ooh. Ooh. That's a Rhino. That is a Rhino. All right, Rhino, yo. Tap land. Smack ya. Opponent down to 14. 2-1. Lifelink. Sure. Land. A crow in war to temporarily steal our rhino. Gives and hits us. So this is gonna end up wrathing our board? Is that the Hmm? Hmm. Uh, one, two, three. Brutal Cathar. Get rid of the Rhino. Get Yarion. I think this works. <laughs> Pona's like kind of spicy. Kind of like Boros Enchantment aggro. Hit you a bit. Down to 11. Makes a token. Yeah, the Yarion is going to be uh, key here, I think. Yeah, Sparrow's like kind of spicy. I, I like what our opponent's trying to do. The Crown War can be pretty powerful. Tashik, this has all kinds of... All kinds of stuff going on. Equips. Big attack. I don't kill this. Get back our rhino. Gain some life. So we have to attack? Alright. Attack with everything. Yarion. Blink everything. Get everything back. Hmm. 
We do have to not die. Oh, if we blink the rhino, we do just win. But we have to not die. You know what? We're, gonna, we're just going to gain three. I think we win by just not dying here, basically. Get rid of the Shadow Sphere. Gain a bunch of... Ooh, Gonti. Gain a bunch of life. Phone it. 3-1. Trample. Haze. Token. Saga goes away. Phone it plays a land. We're good, right? We're good? And we can workshop Warchief with Blitz if we need to? Angel Fire Ignition. Wait, what are we getting? What are we getting punted for? About it. Big attack. How I'm actually confused why we're being punted, honestly. What is what is the punt? I mean, they also have the Angel Fire Ignition, so Rhino is not actually going to be lethal. Unfortunately, because they get to gain life. Getting rid of the the Shadow Sphere helps, but all right, kills the Rhino. We get smacked a bit. Well, wait, Agadim's Awakening. What do we have in the graveyard? Rhino. Rhino, Charming Prince, Brutal Cathar. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Agadim's X4. Brutokathar, Rhino, Charming Prince. Game three. Get rid of the big token. Drain you. Oh, so this one, this, this was probably a pun because we could have... This time I will accept a punt, because I think we could have, uh, <laughs> we could have Charming Prince the Rhino here, and it would have actually, that would have actually deterministically won. I don't think it was correct to do last turn, but this turn, rather than gaining with Charming Prince, Blinking Rhino would have been, would have been better, yeah. That one, that one I will, I will say was probably, but was definitely a punt. That one was a punt. The first one, I don't think was a punt. I think the first one was actually fine. <laughs> you were just, you, you knew I was going to do it. I, I think, I think that's what it was. You knew the punt was coming. You could feel it. <laughs> it had been a minute since there was a punt. So you were just getting prepared for the, for the inevitable. <laughs> uh, punt would suspend one. E exactly. <laughs> so y'all were technically correct. It just took a turn. Is this deck a meme or a dream? I mean, we're three and one, although we're also at a pretty low rank, but it's functional. It's functional and it's been winning a decent amount of games. So I think it's better than a, it's better than a meme for sure. Is it actually like legit competitive? Eh, that is, that's another, another question. I mean, Rhino's been good. Titan of Industry is actually just kind of absurd like Dine of Industry is so so good so so good but the deck has felt pretty good overall I would say oh they have a lot of tokens maybe we got on the Gonti in this matchup seems like a tough Gonti matchup ah enjoy the enjoy the dog walking Master Frogger thank you again for the donation earlier hey what's up lots of spaghetti how are you this is Explorer, Arena Pioneer, not quite, not quite full Pioneer. This sounds pretty good. <laughs> Choke, boil, camera of souls on Arena, please and thank you. I, I, what do you think of the idea of Arena Vintage? So we have right now on Arena, and I know Wizards probably isn't gung-ho about. Ooh, Panharmonicon. Well, that'll be good once we get to it. I know Wizards probably, I mean, they haven't even added Pioneer yet. So I don't think we're anywhere close to, anywhere close to this happening. But I was thinking, because they have like, the Strixhaven Mystical Archive cards and whatnot. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be sweet if there was a format where every card was legal? Because there's like Demonic Tutors and Channels and Lightning Bolts. There's actually a decent amount of cards that 
you literally cannot play in any format, literally any format on Magic Arena. And that's kind of weird to me that there's cards that exist on the client that you just can't play. Ugh. All right, I guess they could just steal our Massacre Worm. We need the, we need the land. Seems unlikely they're gonna actually, actually get enough mana to Massacre us the way this is going. Opponent. Are you, oh please. Well, I guess if they don't attack, we can Elvish Mystic to draw it. Boros Challenger. How is Canadian Highlander? Or maybe the solution would be, Maybe the solution would be finding a way to officially support some of those formats. Because the issue I run into with those is you just can't d jump into a queue. And if I got to go to a Discord and, like, find someone to do a game with, it just kills my my chances of actually playing that format. Same on Moto. Same with, like, Penny Dreadful. People have been asking me about Penny Dreadful for a long time. Play Penny Dreadful. Play it. And I'm sure I would like it. It seems like the exact kind of format I would like. Uh, it's budget friendly, it's got janky brews, you can play all kinds of things. It's got so many things I would like. The only problem is it's a, uh, oh boy. The only problem is it's a, uh, it's not something you can just jump into a queue of. Well, let's Rhino. It would be sweet to get down Panharmonicon first, but I think we gotta wait. I think we gotta wait past the turn. Have you ever played Gladiator? It's Camlander, but only cards on Arena. Gladiator has the same issue. Like, I can't jump into a queue. If I if I can't just jump into a queue and play it, I probably haven't played it. <laughs> Penny Dreadful, Camlander, Pre-Modern. There's, uh, there's a whole bunch of cool formats like that. But I just, uh, I just never end up playing them because... Because they're too... Too much of a headache to actually actually get a game of or too time consuming oh hmm, okay so you're one of those i see i see i see well uh brutal cathar get rid of robber the rich unclear if we can stabilize from here we need to hit some lands. We need to hit some lands. This Embercleave changes the math significantly. Siege Rhino can block at least, and at least it costs mana to equip now. Opponent. All right, taps the Rhino. Goes attacking. Well, we'll block with everything. Well, okay. It's up to you, Siege Rhino. You're going to have to carry. Siege Rhino gets in, hits ya. Teleportation Circle. Elvish Mystic. Blink the Siege Rhino. Gates of Life. Next turn we can massacre. Next turn we can double massacre. That might be that might be it. That might be it. That might be it. I think we can survive this turn in the massacre room. I've been playing a Yorian Siege Rentalist recently. Not as much blink deck, but a fun value pile. Oh yeah, I love playing decks like that. Sounds sweet to chew in. Opponent equips, ghost combat, attacks. Well, yep. We will block. We will lose our rhino. We will drop to eleven. Oh god. Oh, uh, well, on second thought, <laughs> ha, Titan Industry, 4-4, four, four, blow up your Embercleave, and this, this should do it. Uh, blink, Titan of Industry. If you ever blink a Titan of Industry, I think you win. <laughs> I don't know how you lose once you get to this point. <laughs> what was, uh, what was Midweek Magic this week? About it, Scoops, and up. Oh, don't get me wrong, I would... Uh, don't get me wrong. I wish they would, but still seems unlikely Wizards would give players anything for free. Wait, what do we want Wizards to give players for free? You know what they should give players for free is those <laughs> those silly artifact lands. Oh, what a what a travesty. What a travesty. Hey, Gula, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super duper, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I really think... I really think those artifact lands, either just give them away as event prizes or sell them as a bundle, but not anthologies. I can see why people got so upset about that. 
Well, Irina codes for pan uh for Pioneer Challenger decks. I mean, that would be sweet. Although Wizards has really never ever done anything like that. <sighs> I think the difference is some other games, I think an example of this is like, is it Pokemon that has, that gives away, or Yu-Gi-Oh. One of Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh gives away codes for their digital client, or used to at least. Um, I think Wizard Streets Arena is a way to acquire new players, but also a way to make profit. When some other games treat their... Some other games treat their digital client as purely player acquisition. Like, that's the goal of it. The goal is to introduce new players to the game, to get them to eventually buy the paper cards. Uh, so I think that's kind of the, the main difference. Ooh, Shackle Guys Day. Oh, question. So I have this idea. We've, we've gotten to the point where we're starting to... Starting to think about... Hmm, man, let's touch the spirit realm. Get rid of the shackle, guys. Start to think about Vegas in September. How many of you are going to be there? I was thinking of wondering if it would be possible to do some sort of sub thing. I don't know exactly what it would be. And I don't know how many people are going to be there that are subs. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, five people or a hundred people. But... That's something I'm interested in, uh, and I think it could be fun, because I feel like we could definitely use more, more like, sub-rewards of some kind for people who've just been subs forever, been hanging out in the stream forever. Uh, so that was something I was thinking maybe we could do it as a, as kind of a sub-reward thing. I don't know if it'd be at the event or go out to dinner somewhere or exactly what the, what the setup would be, but if that's something that you're... If you're going to be in Vegas and it's something that you would be interested in, let me know because we might be able to uh, to set up something like that. Yeah, I guess we'll keep these. Uh, yeah, Vegas, the end of October for like the Magic 30, the Magic 30 thing. Or are you going to the Magic Summit thing? I think, I think Tomer is going to that. I don't think I'm going to the Magic Summit one. Oh, a lot of, wow. A lot of people seem to be going... Are more people going to the Magic Summit than uh, than the Vegas event? Interesting. I would not have guessed. Uh, let's play this on white. Skyclave. Do you have more counters? Apparently, yes. Well, get in with the Charming Prince. Hit ya. Pass the turn. Considering going, but some fortune news about my job. Oh, that's a uh, that's never good. Unfortunate news about my job is something something you never want to hear. Uh, charming Prince. Do some scrying. Well, Temple Garden Siege right now. Keep them both. Tapland, hit ya. Well, we'll see how many counters our opponent has. If we can stick the Titan, we probably win, because we always win when we stick a Titan. Opponent, wow, finds a Curious Obsession. Goes attacking down to eight. I mean, this could draw them into counters. This could be the draw. The top deck our opponent needed. The Curious Obsession off the top plays a Faceless Haven passes. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. Do you have one more counter opponent? If you do, you got us. Do you got us? Oh my god, they do. No. Wow. Okay. 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 That's unfortunate. Oh, that is um. That is some top tier top deck. A bonus goes combat. Attacks. 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 Oh. Salt Lake is probably cheaper to go to than Vegas. I just heard a podcast about how. <laughs> How Salt Lake is like, uh, dry, the Salt Lake itself is drying up. Oh, uh, we need to be able to block this faceless haven or we die immediately. Mm. Mm, I can't believe they drew three Geist Light Snares. That is unlikely. 
Another Shacklegeist. Yeah, that just does it. We know we're drawing a Rhino. The Rhino's not enough. Hmm. That was that was oh, three guys lay stairs. Uh, people just trying to go to Vegas for Halloween, confused by a different kind of card game being played in casinos. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting that it's uh, Halloween, Halloween weekend. Well, that was unfortunate. Uh, go down the Asharns. Anything cool that we want to do is just going to get countered. Uh, so I think that means we just sideboard out any cool things so we don't have to deal with uh, deal with them getting countered. That's the solution, right? <laughs> all the Sheeze Rhinos, all the Pandermonicons, take them out so they can't get countered. <laughs> um... If you block the Haven with one and then blinked it with Yarion and Spirit Realm, uh, that would have bought you a turn. So chump block, play a Yarion. Uh, does that? Does that buy us a turn? Maybe it does. I don't think there's really a, a way that we... Like what... What possibility do we have of winning, though? I feel like one thing that happens a lot with uh, with concessions is a lot of times there's a way you can stay alive for another turn. But if you're just dead the next turn, then staying alive for one more turn doesn't actually do anything. Like, because the overall goal is to to win the game. So, so just surviving for one more turn for inevitable death, not not really that appealing. Hmm, Massacre Worm does seem good. Yeah, maybe we don't have Charming Brands. Oh, this is like probably my least favorite deck in, to play against. I hate Mono Blue. Mono Blue Curious Obsession. Ever since Standard, ugh. Just uh, definitely one of my least favorite decks to play against by far. Arachalypse! Welcome to the Fishbowl for the 30th month. Uh, thank you for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I tried to go to copy the Rhino, which uh, meant going into blue without having Triomes. Extra color made man impossible. Yeah, not having a uh, fetch lands definitely hurts. Definitely hurts. Uh, in a format like Explorer, if you want to go four or five colors, much, much more difficult. Actually, hmm. We probably just shock ourselves. Yeah, let's shock ourselves. Cause I think we're gonna play this on white, most likely. Opponent. Worse than rogues, it's basically the same as rogues. <laughs> they're they're very a very similar level of annoyingness. Well, elite spellbinder. <laughs> this hand. Rattle chains, another mausoleum under two. Well, if we take the, if we take the rattle chains, what's our opponent gonna do? Like, okay, mausoleum under, sure. And, okay, kill it. About it passes. So the problem is if we just play a siege rhino, we get it down, but then our opponent's free to double curious obsession, draw a million. Which feels bad. Our opponent drawing a million is probably not good for us. And if they draw a million, then <sighs> the problem is though, they're just gonna. Hmm. So what do we do? Wait till there's a curious obsession on the stack and touch the spirit realms? Might be our best bet, I guess. All right, tap land, hit you with the mystic. About it. Down to 19. about it 
thinking. You wouldn't have traded last turn? Curious obsession. So if we touch the spirit realms now, we get rid of one curious obsession. But then we're going to have to face the second one still. Yeah, I think we... Yeah, get rid of it. Fizzle it. What other new anthology cards have you tried? So play it Siege Rhino. Uh... <laughs> Shadowborn Apostle is tomorrow's Against the Odds, so that's going to be coming up. Ascending Spirit. When it gets back the dork. Well, uh, I'll play the Siege Rhino. I think we just got to get a threat down now. So we dealt with one Curious Obsession, which does help. But there's still another one, and there's a slip out the back. The opponent is going to start drawing extra cards to find their counters, do exactly what this deck does. Um, so I've tried... <laughs> uh, oh, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess good on you. <laughs> Last game, it was triple Geist Light Snare. This time, it was triple Curie. Oh, my God. They didn't draw land. Well, all right, opponent. Sorry, friend. Should have drawn lands, I guess. <laughs> all the Curious Obsessions in the world into the graveyard. Uh, we'll go to combat attack. And, well, now the Rhino might carry. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot believe they didn't need a land there. That is the biggest blowout. How do you deal with Lotus Combo? Lots of sideboard guards. Yeah, opponent got... I think pretty unlucky. <laughs> pretty unlucky that they did not draw land out of the double curious obsession there. Well, pass the turn. Yeah, luck is luck is the best. <laughs> uh, all the puns, all the tight plays when it comes down to it. <laughs> Better lucky than good, as they say. Why not wait to see if they're going to attach the second one? So the problem is, if our opponent goes land, uh, so they go Curious Obsession, and we say okay, then they go land Curious Obsession, then we're then they have the Curious Obsession to uh, already on the creature to face it out would slip out the back, so they were gonna get one, gonna get one on regardless. Ooh, teleportation circle. Okay, well, uh, I think this. This ended up being okay somehow. I guess mostly by your opponent only drawing two lands is the that is the somehow, but uh teleportation circle. Play the land, get the Yarion, blink the Rhino. As good as the spirit deck is at having an evasive clock, it is not very good at coming from behind. Like when it's behind it, it cannot keep up. What's more annoying to play against spirits or rogues? Oh, they're they're very similar. They're very very. They, I view them as basically the the same deck, just in different formats. It's the same thing. It's like the tempo card draw, try to counter all your stuff archetype. And it really depends on on what you're playing. I would say. I feel like uh, I think part of the reason I dislike those archetypes is basically because I play a lot of uh, a lot of decks that are trying to do fun things and like the natural merfolk doesn't really counter stuff though merfolk just like plays their things i think that part of the reason i dislike those matchups is those decks if your goal is to like i'm gonna play a four mana do nothing a five mana do nothing resolve a seven mana something those decks are just like the natural the natural hoser to things like that. If I'm playing like some sort of top tier deck, then whatever, like do do whatever you want. But when I'm playing some sort of janky file, I just see it and I'm like, oh no, like we're not gonna do anything fun this game. Like you you get that feeling just going into it, like ah, maybe we can like find a way to ground out a win, but even if we do, you know we're not gonna be we're not gonna be doing like the sweet thing that we were hoping to do. Hey Seth, I've been watching games on YouTube and the replays for a while. First time catching this stream. Hey, awesome, Izzy. Good to have you. Welcome to the stream. Ugh, nothing on turn one, nothing on turn two. I don't know if we can keep that. 
Two turns of doing nothing against this deck. We could just be dead. Well, I guess this is slightly better. Very, very slight. <laughs> A very slight improvement, but we'll try it. I mean, Paulo is good if we're alive. Try him, go. A bounty it on taps. Uh, Mooncakes! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop to everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank ya. Now, play the Mystic. Play the Tapland. Hot shower, cold shower. Hot for sure. Uh, not a, not a cold shower fan. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Rugger. Ooh, let me, let me see Daniel. Doing some uh, Curious Obsession. How do you always have the Curious Obsession? Or three about it. How? I do not understand about it. Mausoleum Wander. Passes. So this means we're gonna get Geist Light snared? I guess. Delete Spellbinder. One mana mana lake. Oh, it resolved. Okay, that's that's huge. We have a chance. There's hope. Slip out the back. Spectral, so I guess we take Spectral Sailor. Do we take Spectral Sailor? We gotta kill a thing with Curious Obsession. This whole game is leading towards us killing the game with Curious Obsession. That is going to determine if we win. Dyson, the hype train is running. Thank you so much. Love the contest, Seth. Me and my friends are thinking of traveling across the country for Magic 30. Any tips? Ooh, uh, are you? how are you getting out there, uh, Di uh, Dysani? Uh, and MTGAA Ron, welcome you to the fishbowl as well. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know what? Let's take, let's take Spectral Sailor. I feel like if they slip out the back or Paulo, that's actually probably okay. It lets them get in an attack, but but then we get a counter on it, and that makes it a much better blocker. <laughs> Otherwise, they could flash this in, tap things down. So this is gonna make them spend their whole turn and then we get to resolve something most likely. Oh, they're just gonna put a counter on it? Okay, that, that works, that works. That also lets them keep getting in for now. Gets in with a shackle, guys, gonna draw a card. Yeah, I mean, that works. You've taken the slip out the back. I was... Okay, they draw Faceless Haven. So we know part, but not all of our opponent's hand. So if we take the if we take the slip out the back, don't they just flash in Spectral Sailor and tap down our blockers? Well, they just drew another one. Don't they just flash in the Spectral Sailor and tap down Paulo anyway and do essentially the same thing and then they still have the slip out the back? Because the Shackle guys, they can tap two creatures to tap something down. I wish they, that's one of my big disappointments of, of this anthology is I really want them to, I really want them to add, oh, that would actually have been relevant. I really want them to add more colors of spirits. So there's, there's options to play like Bant Spirits or Blue White Spirits, but instead of, I really don't understand what Wizards was thinking with this anthology. It kind of, the, the philosophy of it, like kind of blows my mind because they just added all the cards that go in the already good decks. Like that's, that's a part they don't understand. Instead of adding stuff to make new decks, they're just like, oh, Mono Blue Spirits, it's really good. Let's give them another card. Blue Eye Control, already top tier. Let's give them another card. Ragdos Midrange, already the best deck in the format. Let's give them another card. Rather than, rather than adding the cards, it would give us new decks to play with. So I, I was like kind of shocked that Rather than giving us Spell Queller, rather than giving us Selfless Spirit, they just gave us Mausoleum Wanderer, which doesn't add another spirit deck to the format. It just like slightly improves the one that already exists. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like the anthology like almost had to be intentionally designed to not add new decks to the format. Like uh, if you could have just accidentally added new decks to the format, but what did, is there anything we got that's going to add new decks? I guess like, Maybe there's some sort of heroic deck, even though instead of adding the good heroic cards, they added like the ones that no one plays anymore, other than uh than favorite hopolite. 
Uh, they added like the blue, white, uh, battle eyes hoplite that doesn't see play, uh, titan strength that doesn't see play. So they made a lot of weirder choices there. Maybe there's some sort of insul deck, but that deck's still missing a bunch of pieces. I mean, yeah, I guess Rhino, there's tons of new decks it will play, but as far as actually being like legit decks in the in the meta, I feel like we didn't get a ton. Yeah, I think this is just, this is what Spirit does. This is what they do. Stick the Curious Obsession and win the game. Oh, if we could have resolved this, it'd be good, but our opponent tapping down the Salvage Mystic has been like shockingly relevant. This is the, we could have played Tulsimer. We could have Fatal Pushed the Shackle guys, but our opponent Tappage has been, has been really, really, really good. I don't think our opponent even knows how, how much that lack of one mana has, has really changed this game, like in a huge way. Well, I guess we can end with the Siege right now. I mean, Battle Rage doesn't see play either. <laughs> really, like as far as a competitive Pioneer card, it's, it's, I like Battle Rage. I think it's a cool card. I think it's fun to brew around, but it's not a card that you can like find a existing tier that you can find like an existing tier Pioneer deck and be like, oh, it goes there. It's just like, that's not, that's not really what it is. Opponent. I feel like they curated at Heroic and improve existing. They might try and add one new archetype to round out every existing anthology. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, isn't doesn't that really mean it's going to take 40 million years for us to for us to actually get for us to actually get Pioneer on the client like that's that's kind of the issue <laughs> like if they're adding one new archetype uh, then it really is gonna and they do what two one or two anthologies a year then it really is gonna be like five years until we have something like pioneer even though we need like to have the top tier decks we need so little so little we need like uh, i don't know less than 100 cards for sure 50 cards maybe not even like you can go a long way with 10 cards opponent drawing extra cards down to five Well, let's see what they drew. Opponent on taps. Gonna tap our stuff. Well, fade up a shackle, guys. I think we're dead, though. Ah, oh, didn't draw the land. This was rough in a bunch of ways. This was this was so we were so close to winning this match. So close. Temzy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. So uh because our opponent's got spell pierce. So opponent has a counter to uh to answer to answer it unless we wait until we have two mana to pay for it. Alright, so don't pay the two. We draw. Okay, a tap land. Well, play the tap land. And now we're dead to Ascendant Spirit, so we will scoop it up. Uh, wait, was it the same on Moto? Wait, was what the same on Moto? Why do you think they're drawing it out and not releasing more cards quicker? <sighs> Money? I mean, I'm still not fully convinced that Wizards wants, wants Explorer slash Pioneer. Like, I don't know. I guess I, I still feel like they begrudgingly gave us Pioneer because they, because they messed up, they messed up their other format so badly. They messed up their other format so badly that they eventually, eventually just like, were like, oh, maybe all these people were right all along. So I guess... I guess we got to do what they said. Like, no one's playing. <laughs> Everyone's complaining about Historic. No one's playing Alchemy. 
So what else do we do other than just, I guess, start adding Pioneer? But I still don't, I don't feel like Wizards really, I don't know. It's never felt like they really supported it to me. If anything, it feels like they begrudgingly, like, I don't know, begrudgingly, maybe very slightly accept it. But, so I, it seems to me like the plan is to just drag it on. Uh, and the other thing is they make more money. Like, if you sell anthologies by putting, like, a couple of relevant cards and a bunch of irrelevant cards, um, that's better than... That's better than uh, selling an anthology that has all 20 relevant cards and then no anthologies ever again, so. I mean, Brawl has the same amount of support as Pioneer does. Ah, uh, that might be true. Mm, boy. Yeah, I don't know how this goes. If we can stick something good, it would be sweet, but. So this is so this is one of the examples of I think what the anthology did do, which is it made blue white control so you can just copy and paste. You can just copy and paste whatever list you want of blue white control, and uh, and it should be legal now. So you'd have complete blue white control. <laughs> The Brawl Champion of the World, King of Lullaby. Welcome to the Fishball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big two people here. Thank you, thank you, thank you about it. Shark, Spirited Companion. Oh, Poon. I find it really stupid that you need to change the format to Historic if you want to check Explore Anthology cards by building a deck. Oh, really? I didn't I didn't actually realize that was a thing. Oh, this hand is not looking great against control. Four Skyclaves. Four Skyclaves not especially especially helpful. Well, hit you to 17. Play a Panharmonica. We've also somehow drawn no green mana. Opponent. Counters Panharmonica. Rewind, eh? Alright. Counters and untaps. Well, play the land past the turn. Wandering Emperor. Yeah, Siege Rhino was just added to uh, to Arena. Corpo Marsh, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Getting back into MTG. What are you? Uh, what are you playing, March? Fair enough. <laughs> go Blue Eye Control. Go deck is sweet. I mean, the Blue Eye Control is the. It is the deck that is complete. That's for sure. Hmm. Well, we were a little mana screwed and our opponent was a little planeswalker flooded. <laughs> I think we're hitting the bad matchups now. Hava! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ya. Well, we'll play first. I mean, I think if you want to win, that blue eye control is. One of the, I mean, in Explorer and Pioneer right now, Rakdos, Rakdos and Blue Eye Control are, are probably the two, the two best decks. So if your goal is just to uh, win as much as possible, those are probably it. Do you think there can be another Explorer Anthology late this year? I mean, there should be able to be. <laughs> we should have full Pioneer by now. So <laughs> the, sh could there be, should there be? Yes. Will there be? With wizards, you never, you never know. You never know with a uh, with good old Watsy. I don't know. I mean, in Wizards' defense, they did say when they so Wizards said, "Hey, we're gonna give you Pioneer. We're doing Pioneer Masters. It's gonna be awesome." And then everyone got hyped. And then Wizards was like, "Well, on second thought, we're gonna make Alchemy." And then everyone was like, "You, what are you doing? <laughs> everyone hates this format. Please stop." And then after a few months of uh, the format they decided to give us uh, flopping. Then they decided, okay, well, I guess actually we will give you Pioneer. We'll, we'll go back to that promise. But expect it to take several years. So if we take Wizards at face value when they say it's going to take several years, I would say what we would expect would be maybe two anthologies a year, roughly like the one that we just got. And then a few years from now, maybe there'll be a master set that'll actually... 
kind of like finish things more or less by by giving us everything for pioneer sadly i th that would be my guess at the pacing so i think that i think that there'll be another anthology i think that there'll be another anthology maybe next spring maybe every six months or something there's a chance that it comes out there's a chance that we get it later this year. I don't think it's impossible. Oh, missing land drops. I don't think it's that it's impossible that we get one later this year. But I would say it's probably more likely. I would say it's probably more likely that we get one uh, the beginning of next year sometime. About it. I mean, I guess the. I guess I think we'll also know more once. Once we see what Wizards does with Alchemy, I think if Wizards gets to the point where they pull the plug on Alchemy, then maybe maybe that will be something that actually gets them to really embrace Explorer and Pioneer a little bit more. I think at this point, Wizards is still holding out hope that Explorer is going to be a success or that uh, alchemy is going to be a success. And I think they'll get a lot more information. I think they'll get a lot more information based on this summer. I think that's what it comes down to. I think once they can see the numbers from they built, they did a whole set for alchemy, the commander legend, Baldur gate, whatever uh, they did that whole set. It's the mastery tree. All I see is people like primarily I see social media and Reddit posts of people just complaining about it. Uh, I'm sure there are exceptions and I'm sure there, and I know there are some people who do like it. So I don't think it's exclusively that people dislike it, but I would say a huge percentage of people have given them negative feedback about, about the format. If no one plays it and they don't make any money off of it, maybe they just pull the plug and actually put those resources into, into, uh, actually getting pioneer on the client. I think that's like, there's some percentage chance of that happening i don't know if it's a very high percent but i do think that is a i think that is a thing that could happen like there is some some chance that that happens well get in hit you play teleportation circle uh i think four players is not even for everything i have ever heard about four players is that arena just literally can't do it like it's just not designed to support four players and i think that's probably true i think that's probably like doubly true now that it's on mobile i mean i can't imagine oh god i can't imagine that there's a way that you can do four players on mobile i don't even know if you could do four players like even just looking at this battlefield could you actually really do could you actually really do four players even in desktop? I'm not even sure that you can. If our opponent counters this, we're probably just going to scoop and go to the next one. All right, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any. Is there some chance we win this game? Sure. Is there a reason to bang our head into the wall for another 15 minutes? Probably not. <laughs> I think the most likely outcome, and I don't know if this is a good outcome, but I think the most likely outcome is they make some sort of commander client. <laughs> The problem with making a commander client is then you're asking people to buy cards on Magic Online, buy cards on Magic Arena, and buy cards on hypothetical commander four-player client. Like, ugh, that's that's a big ask. Like, it's already a big ask to be like, hey, buy all your cards to play Modern Legacy Vintage Pioneer all this stuff on magic online but then also buy all your cards to play standard and explore and historic on magic arena could you imagine if they also added a third yeah and then also buy and also buy those same decks in paper also you gotta have something for your lgs or when you go to a magic fest i wish it was all could you imagine how awesome magic digital would be if can you imagine how awesome Magic Digital would be is if everything was together and worked well? Like, if there was one client that had whatever the updated looks that some people seem to really care about, uh, like you get on Magic Arena, but then also had 
a functional economy like Magic Online in all the formats like Magic Online and had some sort of like updated updated system for letting you play Commander, like uh, Magic Online but improved or some sort of brand new thing that's even better than Magic Online for Commander. Could you imagine if there was just one client where you could buy the cards and you could play all those formats and do all those things? It would be, oh, it'd be so hyped. People would, oh, people would love it and Wizards would make so much money. But, uh, but I don't know. Instead, we're in this like kind of weird patchwork of like, go to this client to play this format, but then you got to buy the cards on this client to play this format. And then if you want to play Commander, I guess get a webcam and go to Spell Table is your best bet. But maybe someday there'll be a way to do it in digital. Ah. I don't know. I don't know why they took the took the path that they took. Like it's from the outside, it seems like a weird path. I'm sure that there's tons of tons of interior things that well this isn't good is it i'm sure there's tons of interior things that we just can't see that that complicate it and make it way less easy than i'm making it sound like i'm sure there's uh, i'm sure wizards thought of that and there has to be reasons and i don't know exactly what those reasons are but there has to be reasons why they didn't go that direction because it seems so it seems so easy and obvious to do it that way well, opponents off to a fast start there, aren't they? And we're off to the the floody start. Another stone coil. Oh god. Yeah, I think this one's I think this one's just over. Well, blink the elvish mystic. Yeah, we're not even gonna get to the Not even gonna get to the Titan of Industry, unfortunately, which definitely means we're dead. Well, this was an interesting draw. I have not seen a deck like this before. The Ozolith. Norns. <laughs> All right, sure. Yeah, I mean, one of the downsides of playing these 80 card piles is uh, if you if you draw the wrong cards in the wrong order, you just kind of get wrecked. <laughs> we didn't hit any of this pile. I guess we hit one touch of the Spirit Realms, but we did not hit enough of this pile. We hit way too much of this pile. Which, I mean, consistency is not not really the hallmark of being a an 80 card deck that's for sure the moto economy basically can't support free-to-play accounts in the same way the arena economy can right um so no not in the not in the same not in the same way that the arena economy can that's that's true there's not a way to well not a direct way to to take and just start with nothing and spend literally zero dollars and eventually earn a collection. So that is, that is true. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's just play the land, play the Spirited Companion. This hand looks pretty good against what our opponent's trying to do. Multiple removal spells should be, uh, should be helpful. Opponent. So there are ways that you can come pretty close to free to play playing magic online uh using rental programs and then winning events to build your collection that way so there are like roundabout ways to do it but there's not a uh, not a traditional like free to play model that you'd see in in a free to play game or something it's it's a less traditional path i would say oh well, okay there's well yeah let's just do this Touch the Spirit Realms. Get rid of the Luminarch Aspirant. Smack ya. Down to 14. And we got the Massacre Orb. We got the Siege Rhino. This is where we want to be. Opponent Knight of Autumn. Gonna blow up Touch of the Spirit Realms, I assume. Well, here comes the Rhinos, though, opponent. Here comes the Siege Rhino. Sure, puts a counter on it. Actually, is Brutal Cathar better? It might be. Well, let's just, hmm, yeah, let's just Rhino. Rhino's also very good. Rhino, drain you, attack you, down to nine, about a depths. Anyone tried Siege Rhino with Graveyard Recursion, namely the Eerie Ultimatum as a top end. Ooh, I haven't, there was a deck that I wanted to try in, I want to try, what do you feel about Historic? There's a couple of Historic decks that I wanted to try, and one of them was, was similar to that idea. 
Man, let's Brutal Cathar again. Get rid of Plugrinos. Rotate Plugrinos. <laughs> Play a land. Hit you with the Rhino. If we attack out, do we win? I think. Attack out and then blink Rhino? I think this probably... Yeah, I should do it. The opponent goes to three. Touch the Spirit Realms. And that Siege Rhino coming through. Blink it. End of turn. Well, that went much better than game one. <laughs> and dead. Hey, I wanted to show you the brew I made. Uh, is there a way to go about linking it? Sorry to be a bother. I'm new with this. Uh, just uh, just stick it in the chat if you got if you have it uploaded somewhere. Uh, feel free to stick it in the chat. If you don't already have it uploaded, I mean, I would recommend mtggoldfish.com. I'm sure I'm a little biased, but. <laughs> But uh, Goldfish does uh, does do that. But yeah, if you got a link, in general, if you're sharing magic links, we're uh, we're cool with that. Links are not not forbidden in the chat as long as they're uh, safe magic links. So I'd love to see the deck, by the way. So yeah, I had an idea for for playing a, a Siege Rhino Recursion deck, like Abzan Rights. I don't know if you remember the Abzan Rights deck. That we've played that we've played for budget magic i think we can do something sort of similar in we can't do it in explorer because we're missing unburial rights and a bunch of other stuff but there's enough pieces in historic grizzly salvage siege rhinos now uh we don't have ashen rider but we can use other finishers as top end reanimation bone shards ephemerate like we have most of the pieces to make something like this so some shell like this i think could be the eerie ultimatum style shell maybe so i don't know maybe we might do some <sighs> there's like a couple of cool historic decks although historic is just not a format we play very much anymore since explorer came out but we might do a might do a historic stream just for that yeah that's that's a problem that that's the main reason we don't play historic as much as we used to is it is still a, a living format so it's got the alchemy rebalances and uh all the all the alchemy cards and so forth which is stuff people just in generally don't really like But there are some cool deck ideas, like the Enchantress deck with... Uh, we might need black next turn for Fatal Push. <laughs> Actually, all right, let's let's Elvish Mystic. That's fine. Elvish Mystic, go. Don't want anything too scary about it. What's the most played format on Magic Arena? That is a question that I don't actually know the answer to. So uh, actually I do know, so we've seen multiple answers. I know the answer is of most played is standard. Standard is the number one format. I don't think there's any debate about that. After standard, that's where the answer is not super clear. Um, Wizards, I think would say that it is Wizards, I think, would say that it is historic or historic brawl. Uh, the data that we've seen publicly says that maybe it's flipped and it's actually explore and then historic. And then every data that I've ever seen has alchemy like way at the bottom. Way, 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 way. Like almost, almost laughably, like laughably low numbers. Number two most played format on Arena's Alchemy, right? So I saw something. I don't know. I heard some people say this. I have not heard the... I have not seen the actual sources on that. I've heard... I don't know. Where does that number come from? Because any data I've seen says the, the opposite. I think if it's like a Watsy number, the only thing that I would say is... The only thing that I would say is... I think it like forces new players into it. Like aren't all the new player experience games alchemy now? So like if you are brand new and you fire up arena, uh, they're going to give you alchemy decks and put you into alchemy games as the, as a way to earn your first cards. So I'm, I'm curious how those numbers are counted. I imagine there could be a world where 
technically alchemy is actually like heavily played but that like a huge percentage of those games are like i just downloaded the client wizards gave me these cards i have no idea what formats are i guess technically i'm playing alchemy because that's what they put me into uh rather than people who are like consciously choosing consciously choosing to play alchemy Draft, I think draft is very popular. I think one of the things that surprised me is the popularity of Historic Brawl. Like, Historic Brawl is a legit, from the numbers we've seen, is a legit popular format. Like, not even, like, one of the most played formats. Well, get in, Hidja. Janky combo inspired by a stream of yours I watched a while ago where you killed your opponent with Felsdinger. Ah, I remember that stream. That was a that was a fun deck. One, two, three, four, five. Well, sorry, sorry, opponent. <laughs> I have bad news, friend. We have gotten to the I win the game card. Four for Rhino. Blow up your I don't even know. Hardened scales. I guess if they if they want to spend their turn trying to level this up, I think we we will probably accept that at this point. Uh, here go. Ooh, Underworld Abyss. That looks uh that looks sweet. So you got Underworld Dreams, Pier of the Abyss combo, which is sweet. You got the Foul Stingers, got some Omnixless action. That deck looks uh that looks super fun. I like it. Oh, I do love me some Foul Stingers. Wait, is it our turn? Oh, it is our turn. Uh well, I guess we try to kill you. <laughs> uh opponent, how do you feel about taking eleven? Probably one if we swung out there, but eh, who wants to win? Who wants to win when we could be drawing more cards? <laughs> Moon's uh, Moon Res. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Oh, boy, that was way off. Moon's is. Welcome to the fishbowl. Big tip to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Does the deck creator still default to Alchemy? Ah, uh, that's a good question. That is a very good question. I mean, I guess we could find out pretty easily. What do you think there isn't more historic brawl content out there? Are content creators just too out of touch with how people engage with modern magic? Um, so actually, <laughs> uh, well, I think it's a combination of things. What happens if you do a new deck? What does it put you in by default? Select format. Oh, do you have to select a format? What happens if you don't select a format? I don't know. I'm actually not sure. Alchemy is the, the top one. So I assume that it's still the same. Um... So I think there's a couple things. One is a big chunk of content creators, not all of them, of course, but a lot of content creators are probably just used to playing 60 card formats. So I think that's part of it, that maybe it's the content creator's own biases. And I think that there was a time when Brawl was kind of like a laughing stock. And I'm not sure everyone has, I'm not sure everyone has figured out that Historic Brawl is actually like a different format and it's pretty popular. I remember when Brawl came out, it was, it was basically, it really was a joke. Like the, the last, the last impression of Brawl is always that guy that wins tournaments by being the only person that shows up and just no one played it. And then uh, no one liked it. And it just, it was, a, it flopped But like Brawl proper flopped, but historic Brawl, I've been actually been playing it. I actually just a few days ago actually recorded a historic Brawl video. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to post it, but I'm a little nervous. I don't know. Like. How do you feel about historic brawl content? The other reason I think there might be a little skepticism in the creator community is just when I did historic brawl content or brawl content in the pretty distant past, um, it just wasn't very popular. Like people just didn't seem to didn't seem to actually care about it. So then you have a question of like, even if I enjoy playing Historic Brawl, and I've enjoyed playing Historic Brawl quite a bit lately, but if no one's gonna watch, or like half the people are gonna watch it, it compared to doing a standard video or modern video, is it worth it? So, I don't know. But there, I'm gonna, do, I'm doing one as kind of a test run, and also because there was a commander that I really wanted to play. <laughs> there was a commander that I really wanted to play with, so I figured, well, this is my, this is my excuse, this is my reason. Let's see if we can draw a land. A land would be the best. And then we can Charming Prince Blink Skyclave. Ooh, okay. Well, that is quite excellent. Charming Prince Blink Skyclave. You get a 1-1, you lose your Corpse Knight. 
And now it's uh, it's Rhino time. We just seem to keep hitting our lands. If we go right up the curve here, this hand's kind of unbeatable. It might be it might be Goshentai. <laughs> I mean, I like Prosper too, but I love Goshentai. Goshentai of Life's Origin might be my favorite my favorite legend of the past year, like bar none. Ooh, ooh. Okay, uh, teleportation circle. No, wow, this is going to be pretty good. <laughs> Blink the sky, Clave, eat your corpse, knight. <laughs> We're like a brutal Cathar away from just kind of locking our opponent out of this game, or their creatures at least. <laughs> Jesus Zilla, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super video, thank you, thank you, thank you. People like shrines, I thought. Do you not like shrines? Yeah, this deck has been fun. Our record has been decent enough. And the deck, is just, it's so much value, and there's so many Siege Rhinos, so I i like it. Well, there's a Rhino. Um, attack, attack. I guess we pressure at this point. We got the Rhino blank, so we might as well just keep pressuring. Uh, boom. I'm just gonna block. Well, blink the rhino, drain you to 12. Why does teleportation circle see no play? Is it just the Pandermonicon problem that it's it doesn't do enough right away? You gotta have something else on the battlefield for it to do anything. Uh, the value of teleportation circle is so high though, just like the every turn blink is actually pretty strong. I wish we had a land. Um, hmm. What says death touch, right? Hmm. Alright, no attacks. Blink the rhino. <laughs> I mean, I guess we just do this until our opponent eventually scoops if we're not gonna draw lands. <laughs> Ooh, pass the turn. I'll throw in this at the current Explorer event since I don't have Explorer deck. Hopefully the Rhinos are worth crafting. <sighs> we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you will have fun with them. So if your goal is to have fun, I think Rhinos are worth crafting. Whether or not we see Rhinos develop into like a legit top tier deck. The fact that they aren't really in Pioneer makes me a little bit nervous that they're actually going to take off that much in, uh, in Explorer. But the good news is I promise I will keep making cool rhino decks because i just love rhinos so worst case you'll get to play a lot of <laughs> a lot of janky but fun decks that i make opponent a while back you did a video on how to get to moto it was a fantastic video thanks very much hey you're welcome i'm glad it was uh was helpful yeah i mean i wish more people i wish more people played magic online Magic Online offers some definite upsides. I mean, I wish more people played Arena, too. I just, I want more people to play Magic. And I think that for some people, Magic Online offers almost exactly... We're just going to win by blinking this Rhino a bunch of times. We got the Touch of the Spirit Realms. Opponent's going to draw. Maybe we just do this now, just to make doubly, triply sure. Blink the Rhino. <laughs> Pass the turn. Opponent goes to four. Somehow opponent's on two lands as well. This is the, the mana screw battle. <laughs> opponent's two lands in 18 cards. We're three out of 14. I know, but you know what's cooler is blinking rhinos to death. Oh, yeah, the, the Touch of the Spirit Realms um, comes back end step. If we could, uh, yeah, if it came back like ephemerate style, that would have got him right away. But we still win by the end of our turn, I think. Rhino comes back. Rhino comes back. Blink it again. Rhino comes back. So we don't even really need to attack. We can even just chump block with our team if <laughs> if we need to here. Yeah, it's basically Flicker Wisp, the end step return. So Rhino, back. Pono goes to one. <laughs> Undap. Skyclave, doesn't matter. Pester, no attacks. Blink the Rhino. And this was Rhino at its, <laughs> at its blinkiest. 
Good question I've been wondering about myself. I have these extraction specialists, ETB deck, for standard that I want a teleportation circle but never got to. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really fun card. I guess I like blink decks and ETB style decks. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just me, but we might actually need rest in peace. We saw Liliana. We saw Stitcher Supplier. I think they're like the combo, graveyard combo y style of zombies. So we go down Yasharn. Although Yasharn might actually be good. Huh. They might be sacrificing things. <laughs> I like Blink Dex and I cannot lie. <laughs> uh, good one. Good one, Mind Zap Thrall. <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, have you played Amzen Rally the Ancestor deck yet? No, I haven't. I was looking. What is we need a we need a cheap sack outlet. We need a cheap sack outlet. Is there really nothing better than Woe Strider? I know when we played in modern in the past, one of the key aspects was a two mana, two mana sack outlet. Um for like the traditional blood artist style builds because you often want to play rally the ancestors and return to the ranks for redundancy and then be able to rally back or return to the ranks back your sack outlet along with all your sack fodder i'm surprised that we don't we don't have a two mana sack outlet that's free we have two mana sack outlets that cost mana or like once per turn restricted but we don't have a just like free a free two mana sack outlet i don't think in the entire format so i don't know that's something i i got my eye out for i think i still like rallies so i think we'll probably still play some uh probably still play some rally decks uh but that's the big missing piece i think i mean rally could be sweet and just some sort of connive deck like just play like the standard stuff your connive cards rafine's informant and rafine itself and just kind of use it for value yeah, I think Woe Strider is probably the... It's getting sketchy. We're going to mulligan that. I think Woe Strider is probably the best of the current options. It'd be a lot better if it was one, much, one less mana. Are we going much longer? Uh, mm, probably. This will probably be our last match, most likely. I got to go uh, Gotta go get uh, the Bear Bee in a minute. Uh, but, ooh, ooh, brutal Cathar is good. Well, let's just let's just do some scrying in that case. We could use a white source opponent. Fatally pushing. Oh, it hurts! <laughs> it hurts to put the Panharmonic onto the bottom, but I think we gotta. We want white mana for this Skyclave. Self mill with Stitcher Spire and Glow Spore. Yeah, you can self mill Stitcher Spire Glow Spore. You got the Blood Artist effects. So these zombies are getting big. Getting big. Down to 13. Okay, there's the White Source. So play this. Hmm. Skyclave. Get rid of the Champion of the Perished. Will it be enough? Will it be enough? Opponent. So we can brew a Cathar. Then we can Siege Rhino. Then hopefully Yarion. Blink everything. Wayward Servant. Grows the champion. That will block. Down to nine. Brutal Cathar. Get rid of the champion. Play a tap lad. Will Siege Rhino save the day one last time? On Magic Arena for the first time ever. Opponent. Iara keeping the drain theme going. Down to eight. Gets and hits us. No blocks. Down to six. But we got a Siege Rhino. Back up to nine. And a big body. Play the tap land. Pass the turn. Opponent adapts. Hold. Hold. Okay, Meyer trying to mill some cards. Well, that's annoying just because of the death touch, actually. Down to seven. About it. Oh! Oh! 
Oh, ho, 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 gonna be a massacre. It is going to be a massacre. <laughs> Sorry, opponent. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> wow, we've had a couple of good uh, good top decks with this deck. Our very first match, we top decked the Rhino when we were, like, super dead for the double Rhino. And then uh, this match, the Massacre Worm, coming through in the clutch. Yeah, uh, do a bit of killing. Do a bit of draining. Do a bit of attacking. Actually, do we got to leave? You know what? Attack, attack. Get in there. Get in there. Pwn it down to Ted. Adapts with just an Yara. Is it the Massacre Worm Dream? That's the question. Is it the Massacre Worm Dream? Opponent. What do you got? What do you got, opponent? What do you got? Champion? No, the pony had the double champion draw, too, and it still was not enough. Opponent. Hmm. So do we just win by attacking? Not really. Oh, we also have to not die. This is actually still pretty close. All right, no attack. Get a Yarion. Play a tap land. Can we survive? Can we survive one more turn? Opponent. The Yarion should close it out if we get to it. Yeah, rally, rally would be bad. Rally would be deadly. If that's what our opponent's trying to set up, then rally, yeah, rally is super, super duper ultra lethal. <laughs> like that's a lot of zombies and a lot of triggers. About it. All right. Yeah, that uh, that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> oh the rhino almost almost got there uh, well i guess we should have drawn uh the rest in peace <laughs> mm. yeah the flicker would uh the flicker would have done it had we got there well rally doesn't look bad in zombies i guess it's a it's a punishing I guess it's a way to punish people for removing your stuff. You get it some good self mill, I guess. Stitcher supplier, Meyer Triton are decent. Uh opponents playing zombies with Rally the Ancestors to uh reanimate stuff. Kind of a a drainy zombie deck, I guess. What's the spell that brought him back from the graveyard? Uh, Rally the Ancestors. Rally the Ancestors is, it's a unique spell. We've played a bunch of modern decks. I think we've actually played Rally Zombies in modern uh, in the past. Reanimates each creature with converted mana cost extra less. The downside is they all get exiled at the beginning of your next upkeep. So they, you can't really attack with the creatures or anything. So basically you gotta try to, try to have a way to win with triggers from those creatures entering the battlefield basically that's that's kind of the trick to to a, a rally deck is you either want to get back a bunch of stuff and then sack it to blood artists and whatnot that's that's one way to go about it or <clears throat> or uh our opponent has a bunch of stuff that triggers from zombies entering the battlefield to drain so they can get their zombies in the battlefield get them all back sure they're gonna lose everything on the next upkeep but hopefully they just burn you out of the game before you uh before you even uh get to the upkeep is kind of the the theory more or less cool to see rally going off rally is one of the cards i was outside of rhino was most hyped about why rip over lane line? Even in Yarion, you're just likely to find lane line in the rip, and you can cast lane line. Um, if you... Uh, Corpse Knight, eh? How do we want to do this? Yeah, let's just... So I think we want to focus on getting rid of the payoff. So, like, Corpse Knight. We, if we can keep the things that ETB drain off the battlefield... It should make it a lot harder for our opponent to actually do the rally kill. Uh, so... I think the upside of Rest in Peace is Leyline can be kind of weak if you don't have it in your opening hand, in part because it's 4 mana, 
and in part because it leaves the cards in the graveyard. Um, so normally, eh, I don't know. If I have the mana to cast Rip, I usually play. I usually play Rip, especially in a format like this where you don't got to worry about like a turn one reanimation killer or something that just that just gets you. Well, that's brutal, Cathar. Get rid of the Wayward Servant. Opponent. Ooh, taps everything to draw. Sure. I mean, we got a Rhino, too. I mean, I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at. I guess we'll see. Hit ya. Down to 14. Nothing in the graveyard is huge. Nothing in the graveyard is super, super, super big. Opponent. Another Crypt Breaker. So many Crypt Breakers. Well, in that case, uh, Sly Wolf, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go to combat. Do we even want to attack? Maybe we don't. Yeah, let's not attack. Let's play Siege Rhino. Drain you. If we can get our opponent low enough on life, then <laughs> then Crypt Breaker is going to be a little bit hard to do anything with. How does... uh He does have relevant graveyard stuff like the MDFC. Yeah, I mean, we're not really a graveyard deck. I guess the MDFC is a one of. I don't think it's enough that I... We don't care enough about the graveyard that I am worried about protecting our own graveyard. If anything, maybe... <laughs> I just love my MDFCs. If anything, I would probably... Uh, you don't need the Agadim's Awakening. It's kind of just for value. So if we end up shutting it off with a rip, yeah, it's kind of annoying, I guess. But as a one of, I think it's not not really something that you got to worry too much about building around. Obviously, ideally, we won't <laughs> non-bow ourselves. But, eh, eh. Opponent. Liliana kills a brutal Cathar, gets back the dork. Sure. Land is pretty good. So if he's on this at Liliana, and then our rhino dies, do we care? We'll kill this, this, and one of those. Yeah, I mean, let's... Okay, attack Liliana. If this sweeps away our opponent's board, well, then they just rally everything back. They found an Ayara. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to attack the Liliana and see what our opponent does. Okay, big blocks. The opponent's trying to set up the rally by the looks. Draws down to nine. They keep the token. Well, we will Skyclave to get rid of the Liliana. Tapland, Charming Prince, Scry. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Well, keep them both. We got a plan. Pass the turn of it attempts. Ooh, hot sauce. Uh, what kind of what kind of hot sauce you got going on? Like homemade homemade hot sauce. Stitcher supplier mills some cards. Opponent passes. Well, teleportation circle. Land untapped. Get the Yari on. No attacks. Blink Skyclave. Get rid of Stitcher Supplier. 
How close are we to die? One creature, two creature, three creature, drain, drain. So rally would be eight right now? Hmm. I mean, we're not safe by any stretch. Okay, fatal push the Skyclave. Wow, they managed to cast... <laughs> That was a fun. I need to clean my place, Seth. And remember, kids, choke a boy with the best cards of magic. Hey, see ya, Magic Carp. Good luck with, uh, with the cleaving. Hey, what's up, Master? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. It's smoky hot sauce. We'll see what it's like tomorrow. Going to let it chill as a flavor matures. Ooh, that does sound pretty tasty. Well, that was definitely a punt by our opponent. Maybe a deadly punt. Well, kill the token. Titan of Industry. I feel like Titan of Industry always always wins the game. <laughs> Have we lost a game where Titan showed up? I don't think so. So gain a bunch of life, make a 4-4. Four, four. No attacks, blink the Titan. Gain even more life, make even more 4-4s. Four, And opponent gonna draw a card. We're not dead to rally. That's the most important thing. All right, gray merchant. Oh god. Okay, that's that's fine. And way we're well, one, two, three, I don't think we're dead to rally. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Three. So five creatures each drain three times fifteen. Eh, we can we can survive that. We can survive. We can survive that. Uh yeah, this is just the, the ranked later trying to get out from the bottom of the rankings after getting reset yesterday. And most importantly, siege right awake people. <laughs> that's the that's a real weary ward. Yeah, opponents playing some uh some rally zombies. Opponent plays a tap land. I mean, opponent uh, needs to rally just to stay alive, maybe? You can rally and block. Try him. Well, go to combat. Do some attacking. See if they rally. Wow, okay, opponent's just gonna block and block. So 7, 14, 21. So kill some stuff, opponent goes to one. Cycle. Mystic. Blank the Titan. Gain some life. I mean, I think we just gain enough life that we don't die to it. Even if they have it. One, two, three. Oh, if they can also get back the gray merchant, maybe. That might be enough, actually. I was going to be super. They're either just going to... All right, there's the rally. Oh, this definitely isn't enough then. Okay, so opponent rallies. Sure. But they're going to lose everything on their upkeep. So they drain us a bunch, but not a lethal amount. We blink the Titan. Gain four. Make a four, four. I think our opponent had to keep waiting and try to get to the Gray Merchant, maybe. Gray Merchant's nine, 10, 11. That would have been lethal. If they had drawn the land, but then we would have, I guess, yeah, the Titan blink, I guess, screwed that up or they would have had it. All right, opponent draws a card they do get to draw a bunch of cards but they're losing all these creatures forever they are going to exile they're not going back into the graveyard they're done they're done they're done they're done so opponent's gonna refill their hand lose a bunch of life they got it back up to 16 so they're not dead yet they can do it again on their upkeep 
But then all these things are gone, so we don't got to worry about them. But if you sack them, this is not a... If you've never played with Rally, Rally is not... Whenever they leave the battlefield, go to exile. It's just they get exile. So if you can sack them in another way, you can get it back in the graveyard and loop them again. That's part of the part of the the synergy. Found it. Gonna discard a Meyer. Try and make it two two. Get some triggers. Do some draining. Yeah, Siege Rhino's living in the Titan of Industry now. Siege Rhino just came to Arena. It just came out with the last uh, anthology. So we've been messing around with some Siege Rhino. Why is our opponent doing all this now? Oh, they're going to lose the Crypt Breakers, I see. So they're trying to make permanent creatures. Permanent creatures, why they can? Hmm. And now they can tap some... St <laughs> I mean, this the zombie deck doesn't look bad in Explorer. Champion of the Parish is definitely a nice additional payoff sacks to draw a card probably should have put a wayward servant back in the graveyard over the champion though this champion's not going to do anything but a wayward servant could give them another shot at a rally kill how do we end up all the way at seven seven is not a lot of life all right, so opponent did their thing, loses their stuff. We need to keep gaining life. Tap land, passes. We draw a useless land. Hmm. I'll go to combat. Get in with the. This is it. Ended up being a crazy game. Opponent takes it to 11. We'll play a Yarion. Blink. Blink. Play the land. Gain some life. Make a 4-4. Four, four. What a grind. Draw Llanowar. Opponent. Can you kill us somehow? Yeah, this really is like standard from uh from years ago. Alright, champion of the Paris, joining the zombies, drain to eleven, Stitcher Supplier. If they have another rally, that could be a problem. And Crypt Breaker. All right. About it. Passes. We draw nothing. Well, go to combat. Do some attacking. I mean, at some point, our opponent's going to have to start blocking. They're, they're getting close to the dead stage of this game. Drawing the fourth Crypt Breaker is probably bad for us. That's going to let our opponent draw a couple cards. So opponent, you're going to do some blocking. Opponents, I think, all in on the rally now. They need to just top deck another rally. So kill stuff, kill stuff. Kill stuff. Well, this is your shot, opponent. If you can get it set up to, to win with the rally and top deck it, then good on you. Draws. Draw. So I get to draw three. I mean, this is it. It all comes down to this turn. It is all. It is all this turn. Win or lose. Opponent stopped drawing, which I assume means that they drew a rally. Well, play a land of war. Blink the Titan. Four, four, five life. <laughs> Back up to 14. Does Rally beat us? One, two. Oh, they don't really have payoffs. Oh, they have the Grave Merchant. So I don't think Rally does beat us. Oh, there's... Hmm. Okay. There's one Corpse Knight. So maybe it does? 
Oh my goodness, it's so much to think of. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow. Were there draw Stitcher Supplier Rally? Oh my goodness, that is that is the way they could do it. If those were their two draws, then yeah, that, that would do it. That would be enough. Opponent passes. <laughs> Are they just gonna wait and do it at instant speed for the rub-ins? Is that is that the plan? <laughs> Couldn't you blink this guy clave and get rid of the two two? Well, I mean I assume our opponent's about to rally and win here, but I guess we'll see. Uh go attacking. I don't know why they would stop drawing unless their draws were a rally. Like, there's there's really... What do you got to lose? That's the only card that matters. Yeah, opponent appears to have the rat. Well, okay. Castle Lockway. Castle... I don't... I'm so confused. Why didn't they... Why didn't they keep drawing? If you didn't have it... Oh! Wow. Okay, well, I mean, I guess we won. I have no idea why your opponent stopped drawing. When they stopped tapping their creatures to the, the Crypt Breakers, the only thing that made sense to me is they must hit the Rally, because why else would you stop drawing? They're so close, they only got 70 cards in their deck. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, good game. I'm, I am shocked. I am shocked they did not find another Rally. Shocked? Only one in their top 43 cards, so, yeah. I guess we got a little lucky on that one. Oh, well, that is that is Rhinos. I mean, so obviously our rank got bumped down. So we're not playing it at, at Mythic today. Uh, although, record-wise, with maybe a, a bit of assist from uh, our opponents making some interesting choices. Record-wise, though, the deck, I mean, it performed well. We went 6-2 and two overall with the Rhino Monicon. If you like value files, you like Siege Rhinos, it's a fun option. So we'll do some more... We'll do some more um, some more new cards in Exploring Historic, I think, probably next stream. But Siege Rhino proved itself to be good. Titan Industry, kind of busted. One of the nice things about being an 80 card deck is you got a, you got a lot of options. You can always add in whatever card you like. Like, we got Gontis in here because I like Gonti. Is Gonti great? I mean, it's good against control, but you can play your pet cards. So that is a, that is Rhinos. Yeah, maybe some zombie rallies. That did look pretty sweet. I'm, I'm done with trying some zombie rallies. We can put that together. Uh, and, uh, and have some fun with it. So on that note, everyone reminders on the way out the door. Cause I got to go get Barry B check out the normal YouTube, uh, lots of stuff coming up on there. Some really sweet stuff. Also some, uh, Shadowborn of Fossil action tomorrow. Pretty hilarious. Replay YouTube, tons of stuff going up on there. And one more reminder, uh, one more reminder of their sponsor tonight is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish and even get a free mtg goldfish sticker just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up most importantly thank you to all of you y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular and i love all of you y'all are so awesome so have a great night have an amazing wednesday and we'll be back thursday to have some more fun so until then everyone have a good one. I love y'all. Thank you so, so much for hanging out, and I will talk to you soon.